I don't know. <laughs> no, I think you were live. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Township Board of Trustees business meeting for uh, December 13th. And we will start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to and the to republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we just we just uh, uh, ended a study session to, to discuss the uh, uh, hire of a chief of police, how we were going to do the interviews. Uh, so I think I, I hope we got that taken care of. Uh, uh, looks looks like we have. So uh, we we will move on here. Um, additions and deletions. Uh, I'd like to propose one, uh, Mr. Supervisor. Okay. Uh, I move that the township board directs the manager and deputy clerk to research the feasibility and associated costs with implementing hybrid meeting. I'll second that. Okay, so uh, could you say that again, Jameson, please? Yes, sir. Uh, I move that the township board directs the manager and the deputy clerk to research the feasibility and associated costs of implementing hybrid meeting. Okay. I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, any discussion as to clarifying what uh, Jameson would like? But define uh, hybrid, define hybrid, if you don't yes, mind. So I, I know that uh, we want to get back to doing public meetings in the people's house down by the airport. Um, I, I agree with that. I think that by doing a hybrid meeting that enables people to attend from home, uh, we would mitigate, or mitigate risk of COVID to our most vulnerable denizens of the island. Um, while still enabling them to participate in public discourse. Again, define hybrid, please. So, well, I don't know what systems we would use. That's why I would direct the manager and the deputy clerk to look into, or probably Derek, or I mean, uh, Brian in his communications capacity. Uh, but ideally what it would be is we're in the boardroom, people can come to the meetings, but people can also communicate with us via Zoom or some other platform that enables people to, to get online and speak to us, you know, without having to come to Township Hall. So a, a bit of what we got going on now and a bit of what we'll hopefully have going on next month. Uda? Would that include um, board members who are nervous about attending meetings in public? Could a board member attend from a Zoom meeting? Uh, Not, I don't know I, about the legality. Of I that. don't believe they will be able to. I don't believe. I think board members uh, will have to. I don't have think to be that, in person, and the only exceptions for that is. I don't think those exceptions will be going will be on past twelve thirty one. Well, I think I think deployment is if you're in I military know. duty. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, and, no, and we'd have to look into no, I'm all not of that. Sure. Certainly. That's part of it. Okay, that'd be part of the part of it. But uh, I know just about everything is expiring 1231 of those rules regarding the, the meetings, yes. uh, which which I found interesting only because uh, uh, there's so much talk still out there with the health department, mm -hmm. with uh, the governor's office on, on this COVID stuff. I'm really surprised that they didn't do anything about it, uh, but they didn't. Just so you know, the hosp um, Beaumont Hospital Trenton is full, um, and there is a little surge going on on Grosseal, but no one's really that concerned about it. But their um, patients from Grosseal are calling in saying they've been testing positive. Mm -hmm. What can they do? So I'm just letting you know, okay. uh, far from over, 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so we have the request to add the action item. Support. I, okay. I, I, All right. I, and I think we already had the support. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. So with, without any more, it, it, does anybody need any more clarification as to what the action item is? Can I just ask one question or make a sure. statement, Jim? Sure. Uh, as you know, as you stated, Ms. Osteberry's order uh, does expire 1231. So we do have to do something. And if we're going to go by the rules, we do have to have open meetings unless they come and she adds another uh, order onto that. Absolutely. And, right. and so we're going to have to do something. But what Jameson is saying, it really makes it um, more palatable, I guess, for people to still be involved. And uh, uh, maybe there is a clause that that's there for if people aren't comfortable. Well, and, we, and with all the talk, I mean, I, I attend two meetings a week where this this, the, where the COVID is discussed, and normally with the Congress people that are at these meetings, it's all the meetings are also discussed. Mm -hmm. And right now, there just isn't anything, but this is only December 13th. And uh, with, uh, with those politicians, you know, December 30th, something could pop up. So we have to keep watching as to what the, what the rules are. But as far as the actual action item that Jameson is asking, does everybody understand it? So just to be clear, it's it's a motion to request the deputy clerk and uh, township Eric manager to uh, solicit information about hybrid meetings, so not to actually institute. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, I, I, I think probably it's a, a what it, my specific words were research the feasibility and associated costs. So we're really just directing them to research how to do it and how much it would cost. Right, us to do right. It. So I think so we have low impact. We have a second. So if Jim, no one else. For, I, for clarification, we are voting on adding this to the agenda. We are. Yeah. That's what this is. Additions, okay. deletions. Uh, so it's just going to, it's going to be number 12. Sorry. It would be action item number 12 if passed. So anything else with not, with nothing, we, we have an, a request for an additional action item uh, to have the township manager and the deputy clerk uh, research the feasibility uh, and I hope that was, I'll let, I'll let Jameson give his exact terms if we get to the action item uh, regarding uh, uh, having hybrid meetings as far as cost and, and how we would do it. So roll call vote, please. And I will start with uh, Joe. Aye. Uh, Mike. Aye. David? Aye. Carl? Aye. Uda? Aye. Uh, Jameson? Aye. And I vote aye. So that will be added. It will be action action item number 12. And Jameson, you will introduce it. Thank Jim, you. I got a quick question for you, sir, before you move on. Not to throw a monkey wrench into this, but do we need a roll call in the beginning to make this meeting all valid? coming up we do and boy you know one one time i get a uh, get the agenda with the roll call in there and i still still forget that so we will do that right now thank you joe uh since we're still under this uh roll call vote on on uh where you are at and again i'll just go down the line joe so joe porcerelli trustee gross seal township Thank you, Joe, for bringing that out. Uh, Mike? Mike Jarecki, trustee, Gross Hill. Uh, David? Dave, Dave Nadu, treasurer, president in Gross Hill Township. Carl? Carl Bletcher, trustee mm -hmm. in Gross Hill Township. Uta? Uta O'Connor, clerk, president, Gross Hill Township. Jameson? Jameson Yeager, trustee, president in Gross Hill Township. 
Ben Jim Budney, supervisor present in Groziel Township. Thank you. Okay. No other additions or deletions. Oh, yeah. Actually, actually, we had the roll call was put after that. It is on there. Uh, so, uh, with the addition of, of of action item number 12, and there being no other, I would ask for a motion on the approval of the agenda as amended. So moved. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Jamison. Aye. Uh, Uta. Aye. Carl. Carl. Aye. David. Aye. Mike. Aye. Joe. Aye. And I vote aye. So the agenda as amended uh, is approved. We have no presentations tonight. Uh, so we have public comment uh, limited to three minutes. State your name and where you live. And it's uh, these public comments are limited to the agenda items. We will, of course, at the end, have our public comment that is open to any item. So with that, Mr. Bryan. Okay, do we have any public comment tonight? Just give me a raise your hand, use the raise hand function on um, Zoom, and I will call on you. Do we have anyone? Everybody's eager for all those uh, uh, action items. <laughs> Guess we're ready to move on. All yeah, right. I, know. I, I have a comment. Oh, oh. okay, John. Mr. Sabat. You got to raise your hand, John. I apologize uh, for not being at 6 o'clock. I was uh, attending to my daughter. My apologies. Okay. Anyway. Mr. Sabat, please. Uh, Identify yourself. Yeah, John R. Sabah, Grozio, Michigan. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, you know, this thing about excluding the police commission, uh, if I speak out of turn from what happened at 6 o'clock, I, I was on and off, I think, Brian will tell you, between 6.30 and 7. I couldn't get it together. Thanks to him, I got on. Um, uh, are we also going to wipe out the other commissions, the Recreation Commission, the Zoning Commission, the Mr. Planning Sabat, Commission. This is on this, agenda items. Yes, right. This, and this, this is a this is an agenda item. Is it not discussed earlier? It is not. It is not technically, but I but but I know this is an important issue to the public. There is a a, a group of the public that's been chatting about this, so I am going to let this go. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Uta. Anyway. As far as the planning commission, zoning commission, airport commission, are we are we wiping those out? And uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm, we're not sure what you're talking about. Wiping uh, well, anybody uh, out? You said the police commission is not doing the interviewing. Is that correct? They are doing some of the com the interviewing. They're not. Okay. They are going to do some of the interviews. Okay, and you got and you have the other two gentlemen, uh, the third gentleman that's going to be, be involved in the selection and the interview, the formal interview. Is that right, Derek? And Brian? No, they they will not be in, involved in the selection. the The first group, the the first group will do uh, vetting of the the twenty people that are in. They will come up with their with their top candidates. Those candidates will be given to the commission and the commission will do their interviews and select a candidate. So, Jim, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah. Just, hey, John. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Appreciate your concern. Um, and I know it's based on uh, the December 2nd note that Jim wrote me and you probably caught the essence of that note. We were going to be essentially removed from doing the interviews of the 20 candidates. That has since changed. Thank you very much. Thank one you very time, much. 
change on, on, on you know, uh, exception to 6710. We got a lot of candidates. It was like, I don't know, 20? Is that the number I heard? 20. A lot. And so they're going to give us like with a minimum of the three of their best candidates. Then we're going to revert to the, the 6710 process where the commission interviews those candidates and anybody else they want if they choose to do so that is in that group um, and uh, then make our recommendation. So um, the selection will be based on the qualifications of the individual, also his being yeah. familiar with the situation on the island and having a background as far as what needs to All be that. done. John, and, John, John, that is far out of what we should be talking about here. Okay, okay, okay. All, all right. Uh, I'll... Right. Um, so Very much appreciate and, your concern. Uh, yeah, and, but, and, and, and your time, uh, unfortunately, is up. Uh, no, uh, uh, we don't want to, we, and we, John, because John needed some clarification because he had missed it, and that's why we did it. But we don't want to go into discussions on these. This is for comment. Do we have anybody else on comment? Jim, I, Jim I, I just thought maybe it would help if you and or Derek explained the process, maybe this will um, give other people a reason not to talk about it until later in the agenda. All right, Derek, I'm going to turn it over to you because you're the, going to run the group. And by the way, I've asked, I had asked Derek to put this group together to do this. I have not, I, I didn't ask who was going to be in it. Uh, it was, you know, I tried to stay as far away from that as possible as I, as I believe all the board members should let them do their job. Don't try and taint what they're doing. Let them do their job. In this case now, let them pass it on. Let the commission do their job and we will get it. The board will ultimately get this and we'll do our job when it's time for us to. But Derek, quickly, if you would. Yeah, the interview group is going to be made up of four individuals: Brian Friel, myself, a member of the um, of the police, police commission, and then we'll end up having a. The plan is to have a retired chief from a, a different department outside the township uh, participate in the in the in the interviews as well. Um, we uh, basically go through the process of of ranking the applications uh, one through twenty individually. We then bring our rankings together and, and build an aggregate uh, a, a consensus um, ranking uh, for which we'll then schedule those interviews uh, and then we'll choose as a group how many we want to do. Um, usually we try to keep it anywhere between uh, you know, uh, the four to six range, something like that. Then we'll pass along uh, based upon the interviews and those rankings, uh, the, the top uh, maybe uh, three or four applicants uh, to to the police commission, and that's going to be the process. And Derek, make sure people know that the rankings are done anonymously. You do not know the the personal identification of the candidate. You are strictly looking at qualifications. That's a, a good clarification. Thank you for that. I'm confused. You you will know who they are <laughs> when you rank them. You'll be you'll interview them. So you'll know who they are. Right, but when we take the applications, we take the name off the applications before we review their qualifications against oh, the position. that's if you're not going to interview them, and then you rank them. Oh, that's once the you first... interview them, you know who the heck they are. Oh, right? Correct, kind of yeah. Point. I mean, once you interview them, you will know. But when we do the initial ranking, 1 through 20, we take okay. the names off the applications. Just, just for further clarification, because we could spend a lot of time on this tonight, Jim, and I'm try yeah. trying to avoid it, right? Yeah, yeah. So you give us the four candidates. You start out with 20. If we decide we want to interview more of those 20 because we weren't happy with the four, then we will do that as a commission. As a separate this is a, this as is a, a big a, departure. As a separate action. Yeah, it's just, this is a departure. You, you, will take, you will take the committees, whatever they give you, one, two, three, four, you know, six, You'll work on those and you'll do something with them. If you don't, if you're going to say, I don't think any of these guys are, are the right guys, your recommendation to the board will be don't hire any of them. You will also go ahead and 
say, we're going to do whatever you're going to do. Make I don't a different need, you know, whatever you're going to do. And it, you, 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 guys, you guys will make that decision. Right. And you will, I assume, at some point, actually come to us. If you didn't do it through there, you're going to come to us some other way with, with, with your, the commission's recommendation to hire. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and we all we'll make a recommendation together. Remember that. Not you guys, us guys, us and them. We all commission. Township together. The commission. We'll We're talking the commission. We're talking the commission here, what they're going to do. We spoke and earlier. That, whatever happens, it still comes to the board for final decision. It does. The, the board does. hires. The board hires. Right. And But we will make a recommendation. And, you right. know, it, the best case scenario is we're all on the same page and all agree. And um, that's why I think um, this one time, and again, I'm, this is just me talking. I have not convinced. Right. And, and let's, the rest Mike, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but we don't want to yeah. get into yeah. this. We, we've, we've talked about that, uh, you know, and this is, this is supposed to be public comment part. So yeah. let's let the public comment. Okay. All right. I'm Brian, I'm Brian, Brian. Do we, where's your, oh, there you are. Uh, okay. Uh, Greg Carmazan. Greg Carmazan, uh, resident of um, Combe County, Hunton Township, uh, taxpayer, homeowner, 21228 East River Road, Grove Uh First of all, I want to commend uh, uh, Trustee Yeager. I think uh, the idea of holding hybrid oh, meetings oh. is... Uh, is, is excellent. Uh, city of Trenton, City Council of Trenton has been doing this. Okay. Since. And uh, I think it's worked out very well. I've Did watched several that? city council John, meetings. Excuse me. Yeah, thank you, John. I got John Spot needed to mute his. Uh, Go I've ahead. Go several, ahead, Greg. Several of the city council meetings in Trenton. Uh, I, I suggest if anybody has any questions about how a hybrid meeting works, they, they uh, go on the Trenton's website take a look at the uh, past meetings and how they integrate public comment into into their uh, into their discussions it works very well and uh, this is not just for uh, a time for the high uh, for the pandemic uh, this is also something that would benefit uh, citizens during non-pandemic times as well anyone that can't make a meeting uh, in person can can do so uh, through this hybrid method uh, secondly, on the um, on the issue of the police commission and the hiring of the chief, um, I'm I'm rather um, troubled by the idea that uh, the uh, ordinance 6710 is being uh, modified unilaterally without a vote of the township board. I think if you want to change the process that you've been using since at least the early 1970s, that's worked well. Uh, it's picked outstanding chiefs in the past. I think you should have a vote of the township board, you should have a thorough discussion and the police commission should be involved as well. I think there's some very significant legal issues here about having a subcommittee of, of, a, of a essentially created by the supervisor. It reports to the uh, supervisor. Th um, I'm gonna stop you there, Greg, because that's absolutely untrue. Uh, don't, don't, don't be saying things that you don't know, please. That's all I'm gonna okay. say. That's well, all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, Mr. Supervisor, this is the thing. You're, you're, it's you're making also a major not an change. agenda item. Yeah. Well, you do have an action item on, on uh, hiring a police officer that's contingent on filling the police commission, uh, the uh, chief position. So I do think it's germane. But even if it isn't, it, uh, the supervisor is allowed the discussion. So uh, the point is that this is a very significant issue. It deserves attention, full discussion, full consideration with the police commission and the township board going through this methodically. This should not be done through emails and, and sidebar conversations and off the record discussion. It should be done in a public hearing so that the citizens of this island know exactly why we're changing one of the most significant functions of, of this township government, which is public safety services and and we're choosing the top official that oversees the most expensive department of the of the township 
the most powerful department at township and we're doing it in a way that you guys tonight discussing this don't even fully understand what you're voting on so i mean it's really appalling to see the way this is being handled this should be handled methodically if you want to change 6710 which has been enacted since the 70s you should have a, a separate hearing on this and you should invite the police commission okay, greg to, your, your okay, time is up, up. Your time is up and and just because you're you're so off base on this 6710 says police commission will make a recommendation and that's exactly what they're going to get to do that's what 6710 says you're, you're, Go ahead. The person, i'm not greg your time is up i'm not debating this with you thank you move on please okay uh kevin flavin this is Kevin Flavin, Flavin. Park Lane. Hi, Roosevelt. Kevin. Park. Hello, Mr. Supervisor. I am in support of what Mr. Car or Mr. Carmazan just said. I think that I have never seen a more convoluted process of for choosing a police chief. I don't know who. I don't know who has made the decision. Whether it's you or Mr. Bletcher, or Mr. Nadu, or Ms. O'Connor, but you are violating uh, ordinance of the township. And it seems to me that you take a oath to follow the rules and regulations of the state, and you are not doing that. The job of the police commission is to help take politics out of the choice of police chief. Many townships hire outside impartial firms to interview and recommend a police chief. We are you, We are seeing here on Grozil, and please listen to this, my fellow Grozillians. They are hoping, I'm hoping to expose the public, public is attempting, the, the, the elected officials that vote on this, the ones, Budney, Uta, they are attempting to manipulate the choice of police chief by the political power that they have and they are not following ordinance 6710 it appears that mr budney wants a police chief who is beholden to him and his fellow voters wow. uh, i think mr flavin i think this please. is absurd i think this is ridiculous and i hope that the people on the island call in and ring your phone off the hook you for and tell you what they think. You're asking Mr. Thiel, Mr. Friel, and whoever else, these are all people you can fire. There is no objectivity there. These are candidates who will bring lawsuits against the township if they choose uh, because this was not done according to the law and not done correctly. You can smile all you want, but this is not the way to run a township this is just as bad as the damn bridge. And so you don't like that the bridge is open either. Wow. I'm um, not. I'm not taking any questions. Thank you. Okay. You think. You think. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next. Do we have any other public comment tonight? I'm not seeing any unless I'm sure. No, I think we're good. Okay. Nope. All right. Uh, let's move on to the, uh, that was the comments. Thank you for your comments. Uh, res residents, non-residents, uh, people who participated. Uh, um, consent agenda. Mr. Nadu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda 21-054, which includes the minutes of the November 8th regular meeting of the board, check registers dated through December 10th, 2021, approval to pay bills through December 31st, 2021, and the 33rd district court 2022 budget support i got a question about the minutes 
I yes. Think we got it. Okay, it's it's simple. I think it's just something that was left out, um, not uh, intentionally. But if you go down the action items uh, in the minutes, and you go under uh, AA, AIR 21-053, upon recommendation of Grosse Hill Police Commission, we ask Township Board approval to hire Mr. Corey King as police officer with Grosse Isle Township Police Department, effective November 22nd, 2022. It was that motion was 2021. Second. 2021, 2021, I'm sorry. Yep. It was seconded and it was carried unanimously. It doesn't say that. I think we just got to add that in there. Okay. That's it. Okay. Is that, That's we it. have that noted? Ryan and David? Yep. Yeah, I got it. I must have okay. just not hit save on that one. We'll get it fixed. Okay. So at the, the, if we approve the consent agenda, the minutes, will reflect what uh, Mike added. Yep. Anything else? Not hearing anything. We have a motion to approve consent agenda 21-054, which includes minutes of the November 8th, 2021 regular meeting as I'm going to say amended by Mr. Jarecki's comments. Uh, check register dated through December 10th, 2021. Approval to pay bills through December 31st, 2021. And the 33rd District Court 2022 budget. <clears throat> start with, let's start with Jameson. I. Uh, Uta. I. Carl. I. David. I. Mike. I. Joe. I. And I vote I. The consent agenda is a, with the amendment on the uh, uh, minutes is approved. So here we go, action items. We got a few tonight. Start, David. You have action item number one. Thank you. Um, based on the recommendation of the Grozeal Department of Public Services, uh, the Grozeal Township hereby approves a contract with Compo Brothers at a cost of $110,815 for drainage improvements along West River Road. Support. Thank you, Uta. Uh, David or Derek, you wanna give a little history yeah. to what that is? Well, in the 21-22 budget, um, DPS had budgeted $350,000 for really an unnamed drainage project. Uh, after re reviewing in the spring various possible projects, uh, there was an area along West River Road was selected for improvements. And subsequently that we went to the engineers, uh, they designed the project, submitted it to Wayne County for permit review and issuance. And once we got the approvals, uh, the project was bid and the bids for the members of the board, the bids are in your packet. Uh, and it's scheduled to begin in uh, probably late March or early April of next year and conclude uh, by early May. Uh, David, could you, could you uh, indicate the location of that project, please? Yeah, Derek, that, that runs north of Westcroft Garden yeah, it's close to the curve as you go over towards Horse Mill. So it's at the northern end of West River Road. Um, it's very, very narrow. Uh, there's a drainage um, ditch that runs under the road. 
Um, and then basically that stretch right there is all cold patch. So you can't miss it. It's probably the worst spot, um, the farthest north on West River Road right before you hit the, the bend. Absolutely. Just, yeah. And if you go there after a good rain or anything, you'll see why, why drainage needs to be done uh, in that area. Okay. Hey, other comments regarding that? Seeing none, uh, we have a motion based upon the recommendation from the Groziel Department of Public Services Commission uh, that the T Groziel Township Board hereby approves a contract with Compo Brothers Inc. at a cost of $110,815 for drainage improvements along West River Road. David, I'll start with you. Aye. Carl? Aye. Uta? Aye. Jameson? Aye. Uh, Joe? Aye. Mike? Aye. And I vote aye. Uh, we have the drainage relief in that area, hopefully. Mr. Supervisor? Yes. I was too slow when you asked if there were other questions. Oh. Is the remainder of the budget looking for another project? Eric? We'll be reviewing that come budget time. Um, we would have looked at some other projects, but this project had to be engineered and then it had to be submitted to the county because it's a, it's a county drain. Um, and that took probably a good six months. So we just basically ran out of time for other projects. We'll review other projects as part of the budget process in the spring. Okay, so we'll look for something coming. Correct, months. yep. Thank yeah. you. I there's always a drainage project in our future. Have you seen my yard lately? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number two, Airport Commerce Park Manager hired Joe. If you would read the uh, action item, please. Yes, Airport Commerce Park Manager hire. Yes. Okay, I'm having trouble getting this again. It's just on my phone again, Jim. Hold on. I'm sorry. Would you like me to read yeah. it, Joe? Would you no. like some? Yeah, that's fine. The PDF just cut out again. Um, okay. We'll have some, someone else read it and Derek explain it. Shall I read it, Jim? Or Would you please, Uda? Thank you. So the history, purpose, and explanation? No, upon no. No, no, the oh, action the item. The action item. The, the motion sorry. itself. Based Which I got. On... I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. Okay. It's back. Okay. I apologize. No That's... worries. No worries. So yeah. based Go upon ahead, a Jim. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Go ahead, Joe. Based upon a recommendation of the Airport Commerce Park Manager Interview Committee, the Gross Seal Township Board approves the hire of Janelle McNee for the position of airport commerce park manager at an annual salary of $45,000 with an increase to $50,000 upon successfully obtaining M. Dot and FAA airport manager certification. Employment is contingent upon a single drug screen physical and background screening. Support. Support. Thank you. Okay, Derek. On the departure of Mr. Duker uh, this fall, the airport Commerce Park uh, had a vacancy in the position of airport Commerce Park manager. Uh, position posting was developed and advertised uh, this fall in a variety of different venues, including uh, publication of record, trade magazines, websites associated with airport manager field, as well as uh, MML or Michigan Municipal League uh, websites. Uh, we did receive 13 applications for the position. Uh, the committee made up of myself, the Commerce Park uh, chairman, as well as another Commerce Park Commission member um, was formulated. Um, and that group took the applications and reviewed them and ranked them one through 13. In addition to that, the group also met with the Airport Advisory Committee, uh, which is the other 
uh, portion of the of the governing structure of the airport commerce park uh, their advisory in nature and we interviewed or discussed with them what their priorities were as far as applicants and we took those comments uh, forward with regards to our review of the applications um, of the 13 applicants a consensus top five were identified interviews were scheduled for the top five candidates Unfortunately, prior to conducting the interviews, two of the applicants received positions before those interviews took place. Uh, so we ended up interviewing three applicants. Um, Janelle came out on top as the most viable candidate. Uh, we did have a, a number of, of good candidates. All three of them were very, uh, very qualified, but Janelle uh, came out on top as far as uh, being the best suited for the position. Uh, Janelle has actually worked in the airport office on a part-time basis, assisting um, in an interim capacity until a replacement for Mr. Duker could be found. Uh, during that time period, uh, Ms. McNee has pr proven to be a, a fantastic asset to the airport and Commerce Park. Uh, she's been very willing to learn. Uh, she's worked very hard and uh, stabilized the organization while uh, we conducted this process. Uh, Janelle has a background in real estate and property management, uh, and that has proven to be extremely successful as a large portion of the job has to do with leases, business relationships, tenant landlord relations and the such. Uh, one of the requirements uh, via MDOT and the FAA is for the manager to be licensed by the state. So there is a condition here for uh, her to be required to to pass that test and part of her salary is tied to that. Uh, this is not an uncommon practice as um, both Mr. Duker and then myself, uh, prior to that, uh, neither of uh, he nor I had that certification when we took uh, these jobs. I believe I was in 2006, Mr. Duker was 2012, um, and we both went up to Lansing, studied and took the exam with success. So. Uh, this is not an uncommon practice for this position for you to have to go get your license after you've been hired. As a matter of fact, you cannot preemptively go and take that exam and get that certification without a sponsor organization allowing you to go up there. Um, so with that, uh, your support this evening is being requested for this hire. Uh, and uh, I, have a, I have a question and it, it surrounds the fact uh, she has to get her her uh, uh, certification. Uh, looking at her uh, uh, resume and background, uh, you do not feel your group did not feel her lack of uh, uh, airport expertise. The aviation part of it was a problem, as as just stated by you. You didn't have it. Duker didn't have it. Uh, you you went up and get it and got it and, and certainly certainly uh, took care of the airport side. So you don't see that as a problem. That, that's a correct statement. And also the, the airport <laughs> manager has access to the airport advisory committee, obviously not when they take the test or get the certification, but to learn on the aviation side of things, um, you know, to, to they have, the manager has that resource to go, go to, 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 to draw on, to help out in those areas they, they might not be as experienced in. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's a tremendous support system on the commerce park side of things. And then on my end, I will be more than happy to assist uh, Janelle in um, the experiences that I've had in that position to try to bring her along and fill any deficiencies that uh, she might have in the short term, because I'm fully confident that in the long term, she's going to be uh, plenty capable of, of learning these things and, and, and having and gaining the experience and, and being fully qualified to, to, to be in that position. Uh, and can you just speak a little bit? I believe uh, we have an, is it an engineering firm that really does a lot of the aviation side or the airport side of our holdings and always keeps us up to date when things are due or what grants are available uh, to, you know, it, we, we almost have a ready-made uh, assistant for that airport manager. 
Is that yeah, correct? That's a great, that's a great point. Uh, um, and it definitely is, is worth mentioning. Uh, the airport itself has its own engineering firm. So for most municipal work, we use Charles Rain's company. Uh, for the airport, we have a dedicated airport mm -hmm. engineering firm, and that is CNS, is our engineering firm. Their fees are actually paid through grant funds, um, so that doesn't uh, impact the overall operational budget uh, for the airport. But what they do is they provide tremendous guidance to the airport manager as well as the township with regards to things like capital improvements, capital improvement scheduling, um, the airport layout plan, navigating grant requirements with the state of Michigan, ensuring compliance with aviation, FAA, ADO, um, and uh, MDOT guidelines um, in our design and our capital improvements and our projects that we're doing. So they really are a tremendous asset uh, to the airport manager in, in, in helping with some of the things that are a bit more specialized, especially with regards to capital improvements and, uh, and, and airport infrastructure. Um, as a matter of fact, I was on a, a phone call earlier today uh, with CNS, with Janelle, talking about our upcoming taxiway project. And they've really, in a time of, of without having a manager, they've basically taken, taken that complete project and moved it forward through the process that it needs to follow because they really, they kind of quarterback those things and they run those um, almost exclusively with oversight from the manager, but they really handle the day-to-day the -day and the assurances that the state um, and FAA require when a project is in, in process. So it's a very good point, uh, Mr. Supervisor, uh, definitely one worth making. Okay. Other questions of uh, Derek regarding this? Seeing none, we have a motion based on upon a recommendation <laughs> of the Airport Commerce Park Manager Interview Committee, uh, the Roseanne Township Board approved the hire of Janelle McKee for the position of Airport Commerce Park Manager at an annual salary of $45,000 with an increase to $50,000 upon successfully obtaining MDOT FFA uh, airport manager certification. Employment is contingent upon a successful drug screen, physical and background screening. And uh, Joe, I will start with you. Hi. Carl. Hi. David. Hi. Mike. Hi. Jameson. Hi. Uh, Uta. Yes. And I vote yes. So we now have an airport commerce park manager. Thank you very much. Okay. Number three on the list. DDA community development director hire. We have a number of hires today which is good because we had a number of vacancies. Based upon the recommendation of the Community Development DDA Interview Committee, the Groziel Township Board approved the hire of Thomas Koch for the position of Community Development DDA Director at an annual salary of $53,000. The annual salary for the position will increase to 55 after thousand dollars after the initial 12 months of employment contingent upon a successful performance evaluation employment is contingent upon successful drug screen physical background screening and ability to secure a work visa within 60 days of his employment approval item support thank you uda and i will turn it over to derek again uh for the background on this please uh, upon the departure of myself from the community development department um, and also miss evelyn from the dda um, group or DD, uh, downtown development authority uh, the board authorized uh, 
the advertisement of basically a, a combination position. If you recall, we we um, made the decision to move forward with advertising the position as both community development director and DDA director. Uh, a position description was developed because it was a new position for the township. So uh, one had to be created and a posting was advertised in various newspapers. Once again, the publication of record, trade magazines, uh, MML, community development planning um, uh, publications, as well as uh, areas that uh, traditionally would advertise for DDA um, director positions. Um, we did receive five applications for the position. Um, a committee was formulated uh, made of myself, the DDA chairman, as well as an employee of the community development department. And that group ranked these applicants from one through five. Uh, con a consensus top two were identified. And unfortunately, one of the applicants did end up receiving a position before we were able to interview them. Uh, we did move forward with the interview of Mr. Koch, um, and he is the recommended candidate uh, this evening. A copy of his resume is attached, uh, as, as well as um, it's worth mentioning that Mr. Koch is actually a resident of Windsor um, and a Canadian uh, citizen. Um, as a result, the contingencies have been provided for within the recommendation that uh, a work visa is able to be obtained within 60 days of the employment offer. So that's worth noting. Um, I think that the interview group was very uh, impressed with Mr. Koch's resume, uh, his past work performance, um, his education, and felt he was a terrific fit for the position. Um, we actually did conduct um, the first interview via Zoom and then also had an in-person interview with him um, about two weeks afterwards in which the uh, DDA uh, chairman took him through the district. Uh, he had the opportunity to meet with our community development employees, and I think we were all very impressed with, uh, with how he's going to fit into the organization. Um, the uh, DDA group also um, had the opportunity to re review his um, application in its entirety and his resume um, in its entirety. And the chairman had the opportunity to talk with them with regards to his candidacy. And there were no objections to uh, him as the uh, applicant or the candidate for this preferred candidate for this position. The uh, budget for this position, as was previously mentioned, when we went out and advertised for it, uh, the downtown development authority will be contributing $26,000. The balance of the salary will come from community development. Um, so the Downtown Development Authority will be contributing the exact same amount they were uh, providing for their previous hires for the position. So um, once again, the balance will be covered by uh, general fund. Questions, David. Um, I mean, currently the Canada US border is open. Uh, is, there, is there any contingency plan, if you will, or do you anticipate any possible issues with uh, Mr. Koch being able to uh, transit the border? Uh, in the future? In the future. I, I don't think so. That's where the visas come into play. Um, okay. I know that Mr. Koch has been, since we've discussed this position, researching this pretty heavily and there are a variety of different options for his work visa. So, okay. you know, obviously it's different him coming here to visit versus him working here. So I think we're fairly confident that there's enough options that exist to be able to um, bring him here within that 60 day time period, um, you know, with him being able to obtain that visa and not, and not have a problem with that. But obviously we want to put a, a bookend to this to make sure that this isn't a you know, a prolonged situation and that the township has the ability to basically have our offer contingent upon this time period being able to be satisfied. So um, we have an immediate need for this position. We, it's been vacant for some time. So, you know, we, our hope is to get here, him here as soon as possible. Okay. Thanks, Derek. Yep. Others. Yeah. Uda. Thank you, uh, Jim. Um, yeah, Derek, my, my question is similar to Dave's. Um, 
will such a work visa allow him to continue commuting even in the um, chance that there's a future lockdown? Possibly not from the U.S. side, since we seem to be uh, not following that course anymore, but perhaps on the Canadian side. Uh, was there any conversation about potentially uh, moving to the States on a temporary basis, or will that visa allow him to uh, cross even when the border is closed? You know, I can't speak um, exclusively to, to, to all those scenarios about what might happen in the future, but I, I know Mr. Koch <laughs> had expressed to us that his, his wife actually works um, for, um, I believe it's... Um, Oakland University as a professor. So he is well aware of what it takes to commute um, and also the impact that, you know, the COVID issue has presented. And my understanding is she's been able to work uh, on her visa through that entire period of time that there were restrictions. Okay. So, um, and, and, uh, and also we discussed at, at length the, the commute um, and as far as the impact that that would have on him as far as his travel and he expressed no concerns with that i think when he came down to visit with us it was about a 35 minute commute for him so you know that's not out of the ordinary for a lot of people in their position so that's uh i don't think going to be a hindrance for him um in, in taking this job i guess if possible one of the clubs could arrange a ferry for him uh from la salle to <laughs> no, we actually took her by boat yeah yep. all right thank you for answering my question thank you Joe, did you have a question? Yeah, just a, a comment on what they were talking about. And Derek, yeah, there was never a total closure of that border. Um, so he wouldn't, he shouldn't have any issues. That was one of the exemptions because they were allowing people to work. They weren't denying them to uh, make a living. And uh, even during the COVID, that's why the bridge was still, you saw truck traffic and everything still going over the bridge. So what he's done, he's done everything the correct way. And I'm sure he's done his homework, but that was the exemptions in the past during the, the heavy COVID um, issue with Canadians. And you're correct, it was Canada coming over to here was the big issue. But um, that was one of the exceptions, Derek, so he should be fine still. You know, I guess they could change their rules tomorrow, but um, he should be good. Good. Other questions? I will say it's a little bit of a unique situation, you know, with us being so close to Canada. Um, I don't know that I've ever hired a, an employee out of the country, but, uh, you know, they are a very, very close neighbor to us. So. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, and there are a lot of, a lot of Windsorites uh, working, working uh, across the border in the States here. Mike. Yeah. So if for whatever reason, on either side, you know, um, he is not allowed to enter into the U.S. I mean, what's what's the uh, you know what's our what's our what's our plan to accommodate that risk if that were to happen after he's hired? You know, these managerial positions, uh, no different than myself or any of our. Department directors, they are at will positions. Um, if he's physically not able to, to, to make, you know, um, make the location be able to come into work, then we'll have to discuss, you know, the, the employment arrangement with the township. So, um, you know, we, I think we're in time, maybe you can speak to this better than I can, but I think at that point in time, if, if, if access is denied, then we'll have to discuss continued employment. Yeah. So just assume it, just assume it was denied. How difficult <clears throat> was it to find someone like this? Um, if you had to replace that person and uh, would we be able to handle it without any major change in service or, or, you know, what, whatever the duties this gentleman performs. I mean, is that going to have a major impact on us? I think we would be okay. I mean, we've been without a DDA director for, I think, going on six months now, community development, uh, you know, probably going on two months. Um, I think DDA is probably a little bit easier to continue on without community development. I've been trying to bridge that gap the best I can, but, 
you know, it's been a bit difficult with us not having an airport manager and a community development director and a, and, and a variety of other vacancies that we've had. But I, I think to answer your question, we should be okay to be able to, 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 to carry on until that position is filled, if that situation should arise. Other questions? Seeing none. Motion based on a recommendation <laughs> of the Community Development DDA Interview Committee, the Gross Seal Township Board approves the hire of Thomas Cope for the position of Community Development DDA Director at an annual salary of $53,000. The annual salary for the position will increase to $55,000 after the initial 12 months of employment contingent upon a successful performance evaluation. Employment is contingent upon a successful drug screen, physical background screening, and ability to work to secure a work visa within 60 days of this employment approval item. And if I may start with David. Aye. Uh, Carl. Aye. Uh, Uta. Yes. Uh, Joe. Aye. Mike. Aye. Um, uh, Jameson. Aye. Uh, did, 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 did I hit uh, and myself? I vote aye. Carl, did I did I get everybody? I, I feel like I missed somebody. No, everybody's in. Okay. Uh, so we have a potential community development DDA director. Thank you. Okay. Airport maintenance hire, Joe, if you would, please. Yep. Based upon a recommendation of the airport maintenance interview committee, Gross Hill Township Board approves the hire of Frank Firmstone for the position of airport maintenance number two, based upon the terms and conditions listed in the attached offer letter. Report. Okay, uh, uh, Derek, Derek again. No problem. Upon the retirement of Mr. Jones from the airport Commerce Park, um, a, position, a position became available within the maintenance two classification uh, at the airport. A posting was advertised to the position in various newspapers. Once again, the, the publication of record, trade, trade magazines and websites to solicit interest in the position. Uh, we did receive 11 applications uh, for the position. A committee was formulated, which was made up of myself, uh, the deputy clerk, and our current DPS maintenance lead, John Kime. Uh, the interview group, once again, ranked the applicants from one through 11 and a consensus top five were identified. Um, interviews were scheduled for the top five candidates. Um, and after the interviews, uh, the group uh, came to a consensus on the top applicant. And that applicant is Mr. Frank Firmstone. Uh, Mr. Firmstone's uh, qualifications, uh, experience, education are attached uh, in his job application and resume that uh, are part of this action item. Uh, we did have a conversation with uh, the uh, Commerce Park Commission Chairman. Uh, he does support this candidate for this position. Um, and uh, just as re a reference, there were two positions for airport maintenance. Um, both were advertised internally as is required by the collective bargaining agreement. Mr. Gene Kowalski came over from the recreation department to fill one of those positions. And Mr. Frank Firmstone will be filling the other position. Both of these are maintenance two positions. Um, and once again, for reference, with Gene coming over from recreation, we do currently have a, a vacancy in recreation, which is being advertised. And also worth noting, we also have another vacancy in DPS, which is being advertised, which has cleared the internal posting. So we've got a little bit of moving around as far as maintenance positions are concerned, and also some external advertising for those maintenance positions. 
I think we're very, very excited about Mr. Firmstone. Um, as you can see by his resume, he brings a, a great amount of um, experience to the position, um, a lot of value um, in that he has uh, in his current role, uh, a crew coordinator um, uh, title. And uh, he expressed through his uh, interview uh, to us the, the job responsibilities that he, he currently has. And, and I think they fit very, very nicely with what we want to see at the airport here. So I think the, the maintenance at the airport is, is definitely um, gonna be in good hands between uh, uh, Gene and Frank uh, for, for now and into the future. So any questions, I'll try to answer those. Questions. Pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, it'll be a big help to have two people over there. Uh, it's, it's been needed. There's a lot of property to take care of. Uh, so without any questions, based upon a recommendation of the Airport Maintenance Interview Committee, the Grosiel Township Board approves the hire of Frank Firmstone for the position of Airport Maintenance 2, based upon the terms and conditions listed in the attached offer letter. And Joe, I'll start with you. Hi. Uda. Hi. Uda. Thank you. Carl. Hi. David. Hi. Uh, Mike. Hi. Jameson. Hi. And I vote on it. So we have the maintenance two. Thank you very much for that. And next is uh, the confidential police administrative secretary hire. Uh, Mike, that would be you. As recommended by the Grozeal Police Commission, the Grozeal Township Board hereby approves the hire of a new confidential police administrative secretary, Jessica Hancock, with a start date of December 14, 2021. Want the history? Not yet. Support. Thank you. Now, this is the history. Okay. <clears throat> the this action is intended for final approval for the hire and the start date of applicant Jessica Hancock. On November 15, 2021, confidential police administrative secretary Ruth Kalaitis retired after 25 years of service. Ten applicants applied for the open position. Members of the police commission, along with the members of the police department, conducted two rounds of interviews and selected Jessica Hancock for the position pending a background investigation and the background investigation and medical screening have been completed. If approved, Jessica Hancock will have a start date of December 14th, 2021, and a salary of, of $48,000 in its budget. <clears throat> um, there's more background to that, um, but I can stop if there's some questions and uh, provide more. If you'd like okay. uh, that's I think that's a good start. Do we have any questions? Uta. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, Mike, did the police department um, go through the same cycle of interviews that like Derek outlined with? Yeah, the, they I'm started. Wondering. They started with 10 and then they uh, reduced it down to four uh, initial interviews included uh, acting, uh, well, Lieutenant Carmack, Sergeant Rozak, and then the chairman and vice chairman of the commission, uh, Paul uh, Anderson, Scott Longton. They conducted the first round and then uh, the larger group form along with Brent Harden uh, were in the second round. And uh, that commission quorum along with Brent uh, unanimously agreed uh, that she would make a great uh, confidential secretary 
and was the best out of the remaining four. Um, you know, a couple of the, couple of the things that I heard <clears throat> from the interviewees because I wasn't one of them. A real can-do attitude, handle stress very well, um, as 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 well as pressure, and seems to just remain cool, calm uh, throughout any situations that they interviewed her on. Uh, didn't get flustered in any way. She comes across as being extremely intelligent. I think her resume indicates that as well. And um, also a very high level of integrity and a, a great work ethic. So limited experience, um, you know, compared to some people, uh, but uh, definitely convinced both management and the commission uh, that she'd get along uh, well with everybody there, good chemistry, and uh, they very confident, like I said, it was unanimous, that this was their choice. I happen to know her personally, met her personally on some personal business dealings, and um, not socially, but I, she was extremely impressive uh, in terms of uh, uh, her intellect, and uh, kind of raked me over to coals on some things, and that doesn't happen too often. So uh, I was impressed. And I, I just think that uh, I can see why they made the decision that they made, but I wasn't involved in the interview process. I was out. Um, Mike, oh. um, in full disclosure, is she related to anyone current or recently working for the township? Yes, she's uh, Ruth's daughter. Cletus's daughter. And that did not present an issue for anyone on the police commission or, or the police department? No, they didn't, they didn't look at that way. They just looked for the most qualified individual that they felt that uh, um, would, you know, add the most valuable long-term and short-term is my understanding based on my questions. Thank you. Other questions? I have, I, I just have one because it just jumped out at me when I looked at her resume. Uh, it is, is it, it is the lack of, of experience, especially compared to the other candidates. Uh, from, you know, and the big thing that she hadn't worked from, hadn't worked in the, in the uh, business field. Uh, she, uh, and reading her resume, uh, stay-at-home parent from uh, from 2001 until 2021, uh, and looking at the other candidates and the fact that they've been working, uh, I just I, I, I'm trying to understand how someone who hasn't worked for 20 years uh, it jumps all the people. No. Well, actually, she recently had a job, I think, for, what, a year or so? I'm well, sure. uh, she's uh, uh, six months uh, now. Yeah. And in that short period of time, I guess she introduced some new processes and uh, systems to make that particular jeweler uh, more efficient. Um, there was two or three at, at uh, one of the uh, commissioners mentioned. She's, you're, you're right, she doesn't have that. Uh, no apologies. She was a stay-at-home mother, and you know uh, that presents a lot of challenges in and of itself. Absolutely, uh, she is a uh, a lady that handles all the finances, I, I believe. I'm I'm just speculating on that, but I'm almost certain of it. I I I bet my life on it at that home. And uh, like I said, in the in the dealings that I had with her, I think. Um, you know, the fact that she worked in accounting, she graduated, um, what, 4.0 student, uh, uh, two-year um, associate's she did, degree. She did well at, yeah, absolutely did that, well at college. That, that demonstrates to me that she can learn, and she can learn quick, and she can handle complexity. And I think everybody was, again, impressed with they feel her ability to handle stress, to go along with the rest of the team, 
and add, add uh, tremendous value uh, right from the gate is, is some of the things that I heard. And again, this is just not a commission. Um, this is all of the, uh, the managers that were involved in the interview process as well. And I think I just have to go with their recommendation. Uh, they know the challenge is better than anybody uh, on the screen here today that she's got to put up with. And they feel that you know, they're in a very difficult situation. Um, and not that it was a reason to hire her, but I know she could probably pick up the phone and get an answer to any question she may have. And now that we're out three managers, all three, okay, along with um, uh, the, you know, admin, that's not a bad thing. That's just realistically speaking. Uh, I don't think that had anything to do with them hire, the reason for them hiring her, but it sure is an, a hell of an added bonus. Well, uh, 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 Joe. Mike, I'm sorry. Can you please repeat who started the interviews? Who started? I, I missed that. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> Lieutenant Carmack, Sergeant Brozick, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Anderson, and S Assistant Chairman Scott Longton conducted the first round okay right with 10 candidates and then did you say brent was on the final one yeah brent was well i, I just want to say that you know i didn't know that this individual was hired until actually um after um she was the recommendation but i do know that the gentleman that you speak of um they are full of integrity and you stated that you believe that uh Chief Harden obviously is non-biased and he felt at the end then Mike is that correct that she was the best pick too yeah you had every you had all the you had Ranka Longton uh Anderson and who did I miss well, every Jeff and then Brent Jeff Jeff and Andrew, Jeff was Jeff and it was just the three yeah Jeff okay. was not at that meeting okay right but so then the the final was Brenton and, and some of the commissioners and Brent and those commissioners okay. well and I just want to say that the gentleman that you mentioned I I know them personally uh these gentlemen are full of integrity um they obviously saw what it takes what the needs are and you know this position is the chief secretary and it's an important niche believe me you know without Ruth when I was there I'd have been in some trouble I mean the, the secretary um, has a niche that is so important, and I'm not, I'm not lowering that at all. But what I'm telling you is that for these gentlemen to pick anyone, I trust them because what they in, what they're in rather, and I know what their character is. I know that they're integrity-filled individuals, and we've stated even Brett now at the end was obviously in favor of this individual. So I, I'm not sure how we could even say no to that. That's all. David. Jim. Um, yeah, I was I was originally, you know, a little concerned. Concern, yeah, concerned, I guess, about the uh, the lack of employment. Uh, but after after you know, Mike and I talked, uh, we talked this morning or earlier. Uh, and express those same feelings that you just expressed, Mike. And and also, I think that uh, her accounting or the degree, the associate's degree, whatever, and I hesitate to say earned later in life, if you will, um, you know, shows some dedication uh, to improve herself or at least give her the credentials you know, to come back into the workforce. So I was, uh, uh, that alleviated uh, some of my initial concerns. Okay, good, good. Anyone else? Hearing none, we have a recommendation, uh, motion before us as recommended by the police, uh, Grozeal Police Commission, the Grozeal Township Board hereby approved the hire of new confidential police administrative secretary, Jessica Hancock, with a start date of December 14th, 2020.
2021. And Mike, I will start with you. Yes. Jameson? Aye. Uh, David? Aye. Uh, Carl? Aye. Uda? Yes. Uh, Joe? Aye. And I vote aye. So we have a another hire. All good. All good. Uh, and Mike, don't don't walk away. You have number six. Okay. So the recommendation, as recommended by the Grozeal Police Commission, the Grozeal Township Board hereby approves the hire of the new patrolmen contingent upon a funded vacancy within the rakes after determining the next Grozeal police chief. Uh, Court? Go ahead, Mike. Okay. Um, this effort is intended to reduce any delay in the hiring of a police officer, officer should a vacancy present itself during the transition of the new police chief. This action will be exped will expedite the hiring process and eliminate any additional delay due to less than ideal circumstances the police department has been dealt over the past several months. Okay. Um, quite frankly, the current situation is uh, we have two officers on long-term uh, disability right now. Uh, we replace an officer that left McLaughlin um, a, a couple months back and uh, we did hire someone and um, that person of course will be only half effective because they'll have to double up and travel with another officer for at least 30 days. And so we're kind of light on, we're, we're very light on officers uh, and the idea would be if there was an internal candidate hired, then we immediately want to get this person on board uh, so we could reduce some of our overtime. Right now, um, we're running very heavy on overtime. And when we did the initial interview uh, back a few months ago, we interviewed like seven candidates. Uh, it may have been eight. And, uh, and we found that three of them we would hire on the spot if we had openings. And depending upon availability, there's two still on that list and uh, they've been force ranked. And um, again, this was another uh, unanimous, you know, management as well as commission decision, how we rank these folks. And um, so the idea would be if there's an internal candidate uh, hired for chief of police. This would create an opening. We just don't, we don't have the budget right now. Uh, otherwise we, we just hire the person. Um, and uh, that's what I'm recommending for those reasons. We don't want to wait another month to come to another board meeting. Uh, and, and, and that's what it does. It, does. it basically it takes, takes away the, it takes away that delay preempting this by right. saying, go ahead and do it. Uh, if you have that old yes. okay. uh, Jameson was at oh, his hand first. Thanks. Sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I can go after you. Okay. I just wanted to add uh, two things. One, I didn't hear a six second or support for Mike's I, su I supported. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't want to have to go into another special meeting to do a support on the motion. Uh, this is a contingency hire. Is I just want to make sure yeah. that I understand. It, it's it, it it's the ability it's a place to hire. hire. Yeah. Okay. If, Got it. Yeah. If, it's if, an ability to hire if 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 everything falls in line, if, they have the money. If, if and when because it of uh, uh, if if the hire for police chief is within, okay. they'll have money. Uh, and instead of coming back and waiting, which could be two, three weeks to have the meeting yeah. just to say, go do it. They can go do it. This is something that Brent and I talked about and Brent felt, you know, pretty strong about it. 
I think for all the right reasons, by the way, uh, we just can't be sitting on our hands, you know, for 30 days or whatever, depending upon right. the timing of the hiring of the, the chief. And uh, so I applaud him for it. I thought it was a good move. And I think the uh, rest of the commission did it as well. And so, um, yes, Uta. Sorry. Yeah. Uta? Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you, Mike. Um, so essentially, this is uh, just to circle back to what Dave said and ability to hire, but the yeah. ultimate decision to hire will still come back to the board. At absolutely. The board. Absolutely. We're not. Yeah, creating just, the we just won't have to have a meeting to say, yes, you can go out. You and can hire. go ahead. They can. They, that step is kind and of being that, taken care of right here. That makes good sense. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I just, Mike, how many, uh, so this would be a patrol officer, right? Right. How many patrol officers are we supposed to have in our structure? Well, patrol officers per se, I believe the number is, Joe, you're probably better at answering Yeah, if you're that. talking, it's, that's it's, working the road, Jameson. Uh, when I restructured it, I restructured it for 12 officers on the road. But that would include, though, Jameson, um, the sergeant position is a road position. And uh, currently, and whatever the new chief decides to do, um, the uh, lieutenant was a road position also. So those were actually included in road officers. But in patrolmen, there was nine. Okay, that's what I was looking for, was patrolmen. So yeah. nine is optimum, we'll say. How many do we have now? Nine minus two, basically. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, then one's in the, the DEA also, you, if you want to yeah. get technical. So, yeah, okay. so we're so down. This down hiring one. is because we have a shortage. Yes. But, but the budget doesn't match it, and that's why the only way you can hire is if the chief is promoted internally. Well, so it seems like our budget isn't meeting our structural needs then. Well, well, but yeah. one way to look at it, James. Yeah, it, and the re and that's because the revenue isn't there. <laughs> okay. That, that, was my, and that's, that was my only concern. That, that's why I'm saying if if we hire a chief of police, then from internally, then I'm looking at this as an approval to hire the next person uh, that is in line that the commission and management approved. Also, I'm not accomplishing anything here tonight. Right? Okay. Right. Uh -oh. right. Other than my battery's running low. <laughs> okay. So with that, no, if there aren't any other questions, uh, we have a motion before us uh, as recommended uh, Jim, by the commission. I'm sorry, I, I, I was I muted. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. What happens if the township, uh, you say this is if the township hires a new chief internally. So that begs the question, what happens if the township hires a new chief externally? Then, what then they wouldn't have, do? they wouldn't have the money in the budget to hire this. In. Okay, so I just want that yes. set out front. Yes, yes. Jim, would it help if, just to explain, there is money for one way or the other. It's just, it's dependent and predicated upon the internal hire or the external hire. Correct. That'd be correct then. That'd be correct. Okay. 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 Are we ready? All right. No more. And I apologize. I looked down too quick on that and I missed you, uh, Uda. Uh, so we have a motion as recommended by the uh, Groziel Police Commission. The Groziel Township Board hereby approves the hire of a new patrolman contingent upon a funded vacancy within the ranks after determining the next Roseal police chief. Yes. And I will start with Mike again, since Time. it's his. Timing was good to get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. Okay, Joe? Yes. Uh, Uta? Yes. David? Aye. Carl? Aye. Jameson. Aye. And I vote aye. So that is that 
permission is granted. All right. We're almost halfway there. Or we are halfway there. And we have number seven. Number seven is... I think it's mine. That is yours, David. The winter priority <laughs> service approval. Right. Uh Based upon a record, I'd like to make a motion based upon a recommendation by the Gross Yield Department of Public Services Commission uh, that the ground Gross Yield Township Board hereby approves the execution of an agreement with Wayne County for priority winter maintenance services for our local roads. This approval is for the 21 22 winter season and comes in at a cost of $31,775 and 58 cents. Support. Thank you, Carl. David, do you want, uh, are you gonna take it or do you want Derek to take it? How much breath you got left, Derek? I'll a little take bit, a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. Actually, this is, you know, every year we get Wayne County to give us our, or we apply for, pay for uh, priority road uh, snow clearing on our, uh, on our, on our uh, residential roads, on some of our residential roads. Um, and last year the cost was uh, $27,300. And the year before that was 29,300. So it's up a couple of thousand dollars over the, over the last couple of years. Um, and we've got the description uh, of the services provided. Uh, and with this agreement, the county provides the same level of service uh, on those local roads as they do on the primary roads, which are Meridian, East River, and West River. And the, the local roads are, well, I won't go through and read the list. Uh, they are the same every year. They're the same every year. Uh, you know, it's Belleville, Bellevue Church, Ferry, Grays Drive, sections of Horse Mill, uh, Lions Drive, Manchester, uh, South Point, and the sections of Park, Park Lane. Um, just as a just as a note, the the dollar amount is fifty percent of the cost of the prior year. So the change just depends on what they did the year before. Okay, right. Uh, oh. So if if they do fifty thousand dollars this year, our cost next year will be twenty five thousand dollars. Mr. Supervisor, just one yeah. quick comment, if I may. The sure. DPS commission, they reviewed this item before the township got the letter because the letter was late getting out to us. So they kind of took a guess at their at the dollar amount. Their recommendation was basically the budgeted amount, I think, plus 10 percent. But I don't think Dave, Dave you can probably comment on this. The, the DPS commission they didn't seem to have a problem with, you know, if it was a little bit more than that, but I think their exact recommendation or action item was uh, 30,000 plus 10% or something along those lines, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. So we say in the motion based upon the recommendation of the DPS commission, but the dollar amount was a little bit fluid at that point. So I, I think that that recommendation was, you know, predicated on some dollar amounts that they were unaware of. So. Right. Uh, yeah. It, it just as right. a, side the the letter was sent out timely it unfortunately was sent to the wrong supervisor and it never it never ended up in my office timely to get it over to them uh timely but uh, we 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 managed to get it straightened out so uh, uh that's why all that had to happen it's something we've done for years always been approved uh, by the commission uh, and and has worked out well for us. And, and a lot of these are our schools and bus routes uh, that are taken. Uh, the roads are prior, uh, would be priority roads. 
Uda. Yeah, just a quick question, um, a formality, I guess. Since the amount that we are expecting to pay, the amount that we approved is over the budgeted amount, um, I'm assuming you'll adjust the budget and that we can actually afford that adjustment. Derek? Yeah, there's plenty of there's plenty of funds in there for that overage. I think we had thirty thousand budgeted. We're at thirty one seven seven five. Uh, we're in, we're in fine shape as far as the roads budget is concerned. And and to your point, the roads maintenance millage is what finances this work on an annual basis. Well, and and it's appreciated throughout the township. Anyone else? Hearing no one, seeing no one, uh, we have a motion based upon a recommendation by the Groziel Department of Public Services Commission that the Groziel Township Board hereby approves the execution of an agreement with Wayne County for priority winter maintenance services to local roads. This approval is for the 2021-2022 winter season and is at a cost of $31,775.58. And Mr. Nadu, I Aye. will start oh. with you. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Carl? Aye. Joe? Aye. Mike? Aye. Jameson? Aye. Uta? Yes. And I vote yes. So we have our priority uh, snow shoveling for the year. Thank you again for that. All right, Uta, speaking of snow shoveling, <laughs> Uta, if you would, please, number eight. All right, it's a snow removal contract. And so the recommendation, the motion is the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees approves low bidder Rainville lawn care and snow for the removal of snow and salting of the Gross Hill Public Safety Building for the 2021 through 2022 winter season. Support. Thank you, David. Uh, you want to give any history on that, uh, Uda? Well, I'm, I'll be happy to read what was provided since or, I am uh, not familiar with um, public safety to that extent, but the snow removal services at the Gross Hill Public Safety Building are required for efficient and safe operation of emergency vehicles. These services were publicly bid out for the winter season 2021-2022. Two bids were received. The low bidder was Rainville Lawn Care and Snow. Rainville has performed the service for the township before, as well as is the vendor for grass cutting at the facility. Thank you. Other questions? With no other questions, that's it. That saves Derek from doing talking on this one. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Do, you, do we want to clarify the uh, the cost? Because I know there was a question about. I, 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 you want, Derek? I, uh, I did have a question, but evidently everybody else is fine with it. So uh, I, I think we're good to go. Um, well, it is interesting that the. Um, well, I think only the base bid for the other company was listed, but. Uh, okay, and that was, and Uda, that was my question. So, Derek, I guess, yeah, go go ahead. If you look at your bid sheet, so you can uh, bid, you can bid snow removal in two ways. You can have a lump sum for the year, in which, no matter what, how often <laughs> they plow or push the snow, they get paid that amount. So, um, you know, they can push it a hundred times, and you still pay twelve thousand dollars in this case. Or you can push it zero times and they get paid twelve thousand dollars. It's a fixed amount uh, versus the alternate, which is a per event push, which is traditionally what we've done over a public safety. And in this case, it's two hundred dollars for salting, it's two hundred dollars for push, and seventy five dollars for the walkways. Um, 
public safety is going with the per event just simply because you know we might have seven or eight snow events in a given year on average and from a budgetary standpoint it makes better sense for us to yeah. go that route so yeah. the per event is what we're going with and rain and rainville is the low by the, the five dollars on the walkway stuff so yeah. right right rainville did not choose to give a lump sum bid which was their choice and their ability to do that in the bid document and that's that's what threw it off threw it off looking at it yeah. say uh rainville's doing it for nothing yeah. and the other guy wants 12 grand so uh yeah that's that was that was in fact my question well the the irony is if you were to go for the lump sum that year you would get no snow at all well you know you wouldn't yeah, exactly <laughs> and, and we haven't really had that many snowfalls over the course of the last few years uh so uh that i think going the way they did is it makes all the sense in the world yes. all right anyone else see none we have a motion the Grosiel township board of trustees approves low bidder rainville lawn care and snow for the removal of snow <clears throat> and salting of the Grosiel public safety building for the 2021 2022 winter season and uta i will start with you well, I will be happy to say aye. All right. Uh, Mr. Bletcher. Aye. Mr. Jarecki. Aye. Joe. Aye. Jameson. Aye. David. Aye. And I vote aye. So uh, we will be able to get our engines and, and police cars out of the public safety building. Uh, thank you. Moving on, number nine, uh, and that is, I will take that uh, and I will uh, do a tag team with Derek on this. And I notice we also have Jeff Forrester uh, with us today, who's our uh, guru on cell tower. Uh, but this recommendation is something we talked about at our special meeting, I believe. Uh, uh, and uh, and thought it should be uh should go forward with this and the action item is that the Grosiel township board hereby authorizes township cell tower attorney jeffrey forrester to commence discussions with interested parties for the purchase of Grosiel uh township's cell tower I, I don't understand why we can't get a second quicker. Support. Support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a little a little background on this. Uh, uh, we have been receiving requests to purchase our cell towers. Uh, uh, they have gotten to the the numbers that they're talking about are in a range where our attorney uh, has suggested we should seriously look into it. Uh, they're at a point where, uh, and we're in the $2 million range uh, for them. Uh, and uh, so, so that's what the, the motion is based on. Derek, do you want to say anything else on that? I don't think so. Uh, like you had mentioned, uh, with Mr. Forrester being on, on the call, maybe he can shed some additional light or provide sure. answers to questions. Okay, Jeff, would you mind? Yeah, uh, the, um, <clears throat> this actually began last uh, spring. Calls started to come in with uh, interested buyers for the towers. And uh, <clears throat> a good price is, uh, is about 17 to 17 and a half times annual earnings and our adjusted annual earnings on those towers uh, once sprint vacates is going to be about um, eighty four thousand dollars annually so at 17 and a half a 1.4 1.5 million dollar price is a pretty good price in the market that's that's where it's been hovering around not so this year there's a lot of venture capital money out there looking for a, for a place to roost i suppose and uh, they uh we're getting bids we're seeing bids around 20 22 times earnings and it, you know, that's putting us in the 2000 or the 2 million mark. 
And I'm optimistic that we might be able to do a little better than that. The question is, do you really have the appetite to, to part with those towers at that, at that price? And that is an exceptional price. And that's why I went ahead and brought it to the board as, a, as an issue that needs to be considered. Mm -hmm. So, so we, you know, we're certainly, certainly the highest the market's ever been, I think, on that, uh, well above what was thought, uh, something that we need to look into, uh, and that is what the action item is, is to have Jeff pursue to see, okay, the, 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 the letters have been coming in, throwing out high numbers. Uh, what we're asking Jeff to do is, okay, let's see how solid those numbers are and what they look like. Uh, this does not, does not mean we have to sell. That would come back to us with the solid offer. And then we, you know, we make the decision on that. But this is just to say, Jeff, go out and, and solidify these things. See what we really have. Right, and the uh, I'll add to that. Uh, if if what I'm really asking is, uh, do do you have the appetite to sell it when you get the right number? <clears throat> if that happens, uh, a potential suitor, a, a carrier that buys those towers would pay any any effort I put into it. Uh, if uh, if if I bring you the number and you decide you don't want to do it, then I have to bill for some of the time that I work on it. So that's uh, that's really what's at stake right now. I kind of hate to drag those carriers through a lengthy process because there's a lot of due diligence that has to take place uh and and then say oh no we changed our mind you know that kind of thing so uh that's uh if, if that kind of a price which is like i said exceptional for the market is, is something you have the appetite to do then uh it's something i'd be glad to pursue on behalf of the township and and we 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 believe that we we need to do that uh other questions mr yeah. mike so, <clears throat> Jeff, I mean, obviously there's two sides to that coin, right? I mean, just because you can get an exceptional price doesn't mean you want to sell it. It may, may still may make more sense to hold on to it. So I think, you know, we, we have to have a really good understanding of the long-term potential of that uh, tower if we don't sell it, these guys are paying that price for a reason because they think they can make their money back and more, right? None of these guys say, I'm going to buy this uh, because I can't make money, right? And right. Because yep. money's, we need some real analysis as to what the potential that we're giving up, kind of like a net present value analysis of future cash flows, maybe a range adjusted for risk, um, having to do what, you know, what are the future prospects for that? You said we, we lost a carrier. Is there yes. a possibility that yes. we could pick up? Yes. Or maybe Sprint, Sprint was so, taken over. Yeah. And, and maybe Mobile, so we lost them. Oh, and I, I get that. And I know we talked about that the last, but I mean, that's the big question just because you got a business and you can get a great price for it because the market's good. Doesn't mean you sell it. You know, you really, I, I want to under that, that part's easy to understand, right? There, there yeah. there's a lot of VC money out there and they're willing to pay us a premium above, you know, standard. Uh, that's, that's pretty easy analysis, right? I mean, 17, 22 times earnings or whatever revenue. Um, but it's how do we go about understanding what the long-term prospects of what we're giving up other than we know that we lost one carrier and it seems like there's movement towards continued consolidation. I think I heard you say once before, uh, once there's consolidation, then that fee goes away and it's unlikely to return. If two of the, uh, you know, customers utilizing that, uh, tower consolidate, then you pay, you get a single fee versus two. So those are the things I think, um, that we really need to understand. Um, yeah, it's uh, and it will be part of, I, I, I don't disagree with you. That'd be part of the due diligence that we have to do on that, but I, I can't do the, uh, 
um, the financial analysis of that some extra help, you know, for that kind of for that kind of thing. But uh, but it would say, it, I agree with you. It'd be something we have to look into. Yeah, I mean, I think the financial analysis is pretty simple, but understanding the components of that analysis uh, is a difficult thing. Understanding that market and you know. And because, like I said before, these guys aren't willing to pay that price because they're stupid. Right. You know, they're willing to pay that price because they think they can make more money. And maybe the more money is being made because, you know, they, they consolidate and they can charge providers more because there's less competition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know, but I think. I think there needs to be some due diligence there as well. And, and you're right, Mike. I mean, if we, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we could hang on to them and can we make more or is it a matter of they own it, they can make more. That's why they're willing to pay the, the premium, but none of that, if we, if we held on to it, those improvements wouldn't necessarily trickle down to us. So yeah, that the analysis has to be, Buddha, did yeah. you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm fighting a really sore throat. Um, so I, I understand, you know, this, the side that Mike is coming from. Um, I guess I'm looking at it maybe on a little more um, household level. Uh, you know, we, we kind of use that as a little bit of a cash cow uh, for the public safety department, one of them for the um, Centennial Farm. Um, I think before we sell, we have to weigh out what would we be losing in the long run. And, and also, it, it was never really clear to me, are we responsible for the maintenance of these towers? You know, are they, the other side would be, are they becoming a liability to us? If we keep holding on to them, are we going to eventually have to invest a lot of money in those? Um, I guess before I would make a decision to say, go into negotiations. Like you said, that's not something to do lightly. Um, maybe we should have a little bit more of that um, understanding before we say, yeah, it's it's time to sell. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what would, we would be giving up if, you know, obviously we'll get this nice big lump sum, but um, that has to be allocated to something and and coddled, if you will, because every year we were getting, you know, a small sum that we were able to use every year toward some goal in a department. Um, and and that, good question. I mean, because if you take whatever you take, that's a that's a finite sum, and if you start just using that up, so yeah. Anne, is your hand raised? Is that a correct thing, Brian? Is that what I see? Ryan, what are you asking? Is Ann's hand raised? I do, I do not see Ann's hand raised. No, I wasn't. Uh, my hand wasn't raised, but uh, we can surely talk about that if you'd like. Yeah, explain what we've talked about regarding regarding that very thing. Are right. we gonna Are we gonna use up the principal in X number of years? And now that board that you know the township will be sitting there still with the requirement of money and the money's used up and that right. is one of the things that we discussed and Ann, right. go ahead sure so what we were talking about uh doing with the money yes we all have the same concerns that if we just put the money somewhere it's going to be used you know whether we're here or not it's going to be used for the wrong purposes or you be used or for used things up. that be used up for right because what so what we are planning on doing or what we we're thinking of doing and i did look into it is we have our health um, um savings vehicle for our op for our um health care be retired benefits it's our unfunded liability so we thought if we could put it into that account with mers because we are held responsible the public act um that we can invest our monies and we can't make a lot of money or we can't put the taxpayers money in anything that would be risky and lose money so but the two exceptions would be into our MERS pension and to our health care pension 
So if we could put that money aside in there because the interest rates um, that it can earn in there are a lot more than what we could earn in what we can invest in for Public Act 21. And what we would do is alleviate some of the money that we're putting toward um, our health care into our savings plan, which is not at this time required that we have to put any money in. We fund it as we, as we see fit and we try to fund it um, in advance. So what it does is it's making more interest than I can get on the market anywhere. We were hoping that that money, having the $2 million, could alleviate $100,000 of general funds to offset the cost of health care. So that's what we're doing. It's all, um, we looked into it with our bonding council and our um, health care plan with the MERS, and it's all perfectly fine to do that and actually um, live on that money. So that's what we're thinking. Um, we would get the best bang for our buck per se um, by doing that type of thing with it. So, so that was an what option. We're, what we're saying is uh, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to take our money to put into it because that money would be earning enough to cover it. We would right. have an extra and, and, and it is around $100,000 that we need each year uh, as Correct. to where the cell tower money goes. Uh, that's that's how we would do it. So we would be fine. We wouldn't be losing the revenue to fund what what that funds and uh, actually probably be ahead in our uh, retirement health care. Right. And, and honestly, we've been looking at this for, I would say, the last 15 years. So it's not going to be taken lightly, but um, the uncertainty of the future is, is, is still uncertain as it was 15 years ago. So it, that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, you know, this is not, this is not saying we will absolutely sell. We're, you know, but we'll have something more definite than, yeah, we're, we're interested and throw around numbers. We, we get down to what, what, what do you really mean? That's all we're looking at. And we still have the ability to look at all these things and get all these, any questions that any of you have, get them answered uh, before we make any decision. Yeah, one more, I'm sorry. Mike? Go ahead. I, I was just going to say one more question, too. Um, if we do sell, do we give up any, do we give up control of what they can do with that tower? Uh, would we have less control? Could they, you know, make it disruptive to community living for whatever reason by adding, you know, making it bigger or, or adding uh, more providers and, you know, bringing down property values, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, right. You know, those are, that's another aspect. That, that's, a, that's another aspect of it. Uh, Jeff, yeah. what's your thought yeah, on that? That's an excellent question, but uh, that would be, uh, um, because of the hunger, I think, for those uh, those tower assets right now, uh, I believe that we could uh, negotiate in those kinds of provisions that would protect us from, you know, the aesthetics of it and uh, any kind of a build out uh, we'd, uh, we we can make get our approval first and uh, that kind of thing. So we can build that into the agreement. <clears throat> but I just I just want to add that uh, you know you talked about how they're eager to make a profit on this thing. I don't think it. I don't. I think there's just a heck of a lot of uh, venture capital money out of there because of the market, and it's and, and it's looking for a place to diversify into. And those are really stable investments. So uh, so I think it's that's probably quite a bit of the appeal for the for the tower companies. Um, a clarifying question to Ann. So, Ann, just to kind of simplify um, your, you know, explanation, and I'm mm -hmm. just going to, I'm going to pull some numbers out of the air. Okay, these are right. not the right. But right now, let's just say we're getting a hundred thousand dollars in cash from the tower in right. our pocket every year. You, you're saying that we could reduce our out of cash expense by something more than that possibly right long term yeah. 
Okay, so that's the analysis that we're looking for, right? Yeah. And then the, I think the other piece, Jeff, is what we just discussed, mm -hmm. at least from my perspective. Those are the things that I would be interested in. Is it cash flow positive force, period? Uh, you know, you're playing around with the pockets that you're putting it in. And secondly, um, you know, is it going to disrupt our property values? And um, and then, of course, the, the first question was, what is the future for that thing? I mean, do we know enough about the future of these towers that we're giving up a gold mine that maybe the cash flow now is 100, but it could be 200 right. based on things changing down the road? And that's the piece I don't understand because um, I don't understand the market for these things. Uh, maybe Jeff. And I believe, I don't... Yeah. And I believe we asked Jeff that. And... Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to give you mostly what my uh, uh, oversight or my perspective is from what I know in the market. And that's that um, the, um, the small cells that were supposed to come in with 5G, which I think still several years away, uh, they, they, the carriers went straight to the county and negotiated everything in county easements, which took the money out of our pockets. So they're still going to come onto the island. They're still going to put the small cells in there and they're going to do it all in county easements. So it's, it's getting harder and harder to squeeze a dollar out of these guys. And uh, that's, uh, and the con and the contracts are getting more and more complex. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the thing. I, I don't want to hurt my arm, pat myself on the back or anything, but I've been watching the towers here since 2004. And uh, I've, I've, had, I've had a hand in most of the contracts and ours are, we, we have a really good suite of contracts. Uh, thank Ford for that. They're the ones that taught me how to deal with this stuff. But, uh, but at any rate, uh, I, I also see the, t the contracts in other municipalities and they're nightmares. They, they just really, they have some, they sign things away. I'm gonna tell you a sh short story on this next issue here that uh, that'll bring that to light, but uh, they're getting increasingly difficult to, to to handle and the cost to do that, I get hit by a bus or something like that. You're gonna be paying huge dollars to an outside law firm if you stay on top of them. What usually happens is just whomever you know has a as in charge of the contracts for the township ends up with that work, and there's not a lot of uh, cellular expertise or background that comes to that. And uh, those are those are the contracts that really really seem to get hammered. The carriers are uh, they'll they'll get you every chance they can. And like I said, I've got a story I'll tell you on the next one, but that's, uh, we don't need to go into it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions, uh, Uta. Thank you, Jim. Um, Jeff, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot either, uh, but you brought it up um, that if, you know, you go through the process of negotiating, you set things up and so forth, and um, you cautioned us not to take this lightly because there would be, eventually be a fee involved that if a you know contract is negotiated of course your fee would come out of that contract but if we decide not to pursue it um what is the ballpark i mean i don't want you to give away your trade secrets but what yeah. is the ballpark that we might be looking at um as a fee assuming it doesn't get really assuming we don't get really far down the road with the due diligence that kind of thing it's um I, I think maybe over the course of six months, 80 hours. So that's uh, in my building rate that committed about 10 grand. Yeah, it's uh, the towers, for instance, the, the tower information that I brought you on this, on this uh, presentation, I've been, I've been fielding calls since last April on these things and, you know, pulling information together and talking to different carriers. And I, I, I just charged, uh, I just invoiced six hours. So, that's uh, that's quite that's not uh, that's nothing. So I'm not uh, you're not a profit you're not a profit center for me. <laughs> so. Okay, but thank you for giving us that yeah. insight. I'd just like to say, Jeff, that's big money for us trustees. Yeah, <laughs> I know I was a trustee uh, once uh, too. <laughs> that, that, yeah, you you were. Yeah. Jim, I have two questions. Uh, the first is, to, uh, Jeff, what are the lengths of the present contracts that we have on those towers? When do they expire? Uh, uh, Verizon and uh, AT&T are going to 
expire in the next uh, three to five years. I think three years for AT and T, and about five for Verizon. Uh, T Mobile just negotiated a twenty-year deal with them, and then this uh, Dish contract that we're going to talk about next is a is a twenty-year deal. So it's uh, but that, that that goes into the uh, the carriers like them to expire soon, so they can get in there and and really ruthlessly negotiate their own. But uh, but that's where we're at right now. Sprint's going away, so that uh, that doesn't matter any, anymore to us. Second question is for Ann, and that is if we're taking money uh, presently that's being enjoyed by public safety and by the rec uh, commission, when you come back to us at some point okay. next month or two months, I'd like to know how we expect to replace that stream of revenue to those two departments. That's the only other question that I have. Right, and we are talking we would do that with the interest because we would be gaining so much more interest on that $2 million sitting there than we would at any bank of ours. So we would replace it with the interest income that we're getting off the, the money sitting there that I can't take right now. Just like your stock market, it's it's been going up. So um, their investment rate is a lot higher than what I can do with anything that's that's um, legal as far as taxpayer dollars. There are just so many funds that are dedicated uh, millages, and I want to make sure that if we're taking uh, X amount of dollars from public safety, how we're going to work that into their budget, and the same thing with REC, if we're going to be taking that out. Um, if you're confident that we can take that investment, that return on the investment, and do better with that and still maintain the same cash flow to REC and to public safety, that's one concern. Right. Yeah, and that was that, that was our do. our first our first thought because uh, despite the two million looking good, if we went into our regular investments, uh, you've heard you heard Ed Van Oss, you hear Dave when he gives the investment report. You know, we 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 don't even get bubblegum money uh, on the regular investments, and that was the question. Is there something we can do right. to actually make some money? And, and and in our research, this is what we came up with that is legal for us to do and would cover that revenue stream for what we do. Right, because um, legally we aren't required to put to fund our health care long-term liability. We're not required by the state to fund it. So what we would do just a simple example right now we're, we pre-fund about um three hundred thousand dollars of police to pay for we put that into the health trust account in the at in the beginning of the year and that gains interest so what we'll do instead of putting 300 in there we put 200 in there and transfer 50 to the uh, public safety building and 50 to the rec so we're because we're not required to fund it so then the interest would gain we'd still gain more interest on that. And we would um, uh, do our accumulated fund, uh, unfunded liability will grow faster by that money sitting in there than us just contributing our normal cost every year. It's different than a pension because it's not required to be funded, if that makes sense. So our pension's required yeah. to be funded. We, are, we, we do it, this is more at our discretion. So that's why this would work. Does that make sense? Okay. No. <laughs> so what, Ian, what you're saying is that those funds are not restricted. Correct. They're not right. restricted. We're not with, required correct. to fund, okay. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, just one thing worth mentioning, let's just be clear, we're not taking money away from OPEB, you know, funds for, for retiree health care. Okay. You're basically taking the money that you were contributing from general fund to that redirecting that to those accounts the cell towers were 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 you know revenue funding. was going to and and, and using so the interest to replace that in that area plus you've got another two million dollars sitting in there which helps out with the unfunded liability so it can in really total. be a win-win situation right yeah yeah the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall together <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have we 
believe me, it wasn't just uh, when when this was brought to us. It wasn't just, hey, you're going to, you know, we you can get about $2 million, let's, you know, to use as an example. It wasn't two million sounds good, but we have we have we need revenue to fund certain expenses that are there. How are we going to keep it up? Uh, we certainly would be okay in our you know during our administration, but down the road there would be you know at some point down the road that money would be used up if we just went to the principal. So right. it wasn't the principal; it was what can what can we earn to cover everything. Right. And, and in and simple, we, in simple terms, it's five percent. So can yeah. we get that anywhere else? Absolutely not. And our pension is running at about, you know, on average seven and a half percent per year. So obviously, it's going to do better there and help our cause, right? And our unfunded liabilities. So we have a we have a bottom line number too that we won't go below, right? Well, you have an, a number in mind that we can't go below. We have to get at least this much in order to um, achieve our goals. Uh, if we need it, and you're talking about the amount we have to get on the sale. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. yes. So no, if, that, is running if that if that if uh, $2 million in the letter comes in at $1.1 in the actual offer, that answers our question. Yeah. Anything else? I just want to add that uh, the um, uh, if you talk to someone else, they say, "Oh no, you can get three million for those, or you can get four million for those." That's that's just not true. It's uh, I uh, had the good fortune of uh, uh, stumbling into John Pestel, and he's like the top guy in the country on this stuff. And that's why that's why I talk to the I'll, I'll discuss these deals with him just casually, and uh, it's uh, that's those are good prices. Those are good solid prices. So regardless of anybody else tells you. Pestle's the guy, and and I've been talking to him about it, and that's that's where we're at with the price. Yeah. So Pestle Thanks. was a Ford guy, by the way, too, ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. All right. Anyone else? All right. We have a motion. The Grosseal Township Board hereby authorizes the township cell tower uh, attorney, Jeffrey <coughs> Forrester, Forrester, to commence discussions with interested parties for the purchase of uh, Grosseal Township cell towers. Mr. Nadu. Aye. Mr. Jarecki. Aye. Mr. Uh, Yeager. Nay. Okay. Mr. Uh, Forcerelli. That was I. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Bletcher. Aye. And I vote aye. So uh, that uh, authorization is given. Thank you very much. And we move on to our second cell tower issue, and that's the approval to, uh, of cell tower lease agreement with Dish Wireless. Uh, the motion is the Grosseal Township Board hereby authorizes the execution of the attached agreement between Grosseal Township and Dish Wireless LLC for the lease of property located at 24529 Meridian, which is the cell tower by the uh, public safety building. Uh, that is the motion. Order. Thank you. Uh, Derek, I'm going to ask you to jump in with the history, and Jeff, again, will lean on you also. Uh, this is something that's been going on, and uh, you can explain how it got to this uh, dish breaking our uh, AT and T and all that, if you would, Derek. Uh, and I'm once again going to defer to Jeff. I'm sure oh. he can explain it better than I. But uh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. You go ahead. 
the uh, this is this one. This one is. Uh, I'm going to try to make the story as short as possible. But uh, this is uh, why I say it's getting more and more complex to to own these towers and manage the contracts. Uh, uh, Dish set aside, you know, because of the merger between uh, T-Mobile and Sprint, uh, the FTC wanted a, another third party. They wanted another carrier to, to keep the competition uh, robust. And so T-Mobile gave all their uh, prepaid to Dish, to Dish Networks, to, to start their own nationwide network. And the, the prepaid is the stuff like uh, Metro PCS and uh, Boost Mobile, that kind of thing. It's, it's not a huge market, but we get this letter from AT&T uh, asking us if they can have consent to put some extra antennas in their antenna array. And uh, I saw it for what it was. Uh, Dish had set aside $5 billion to fund AT&T to carry these handsets until they could build their network. Now, had we given AT&T that consent, we'd have dropped down on Dish's priority list down to nothing. So I told AT&T basically pound saying you can't have it, you can't have the consent. That put us higher on the list with Dish, and sure enough, Dish showed up when it negotiated a deal for their tower space. So, so we, we kind of we played their hand on that thing, and then we entered this agreement with Dish. And I don't know if uh, you read the agreement that was that may or may not have been given to you on that, but uh, they're a small player. They wanted to come in at a thousand dollars a month. What they were hoping for is they negotiate like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a month, that kind of thing. It would take us 20 years to get market value for the for the you know for the actual monthly rate, which is about 2,000 to 2,500 in that ballpark. So what I did was I said, no, I'm going to give you 2,000, and I'm going to give you a 50% discount for the first term. That way, I don't have to wind my way up from $1,300 for the next 20 years to try to get to market. At the end of the first five-year term, it pops up, it, 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 you know, our, our rent doubles, and that's so I gave them that. <clears throat> By doing that. I was able to by give them the thousand uh, for the first term. I was able to uh, get rid of some really toxic uh, clauses they had in there, like right of first refusal that we wanted to sell the towers, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, hurdles to negotiating a good deal with the carriers. This one came out pretty good, I believe. And the the small number that you're seeing, the fifty percent discount on the two thousand for the first term, they're 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 not a competitor on par with Sprint or, or um, with T-Mobile or with AT&T or Verizon. They have a very small population compared to that. If they survive, if they thrive, uh, you know, in five years time, then we we pop up to 2000 a month at that point in revenue. And that's, uh, um, and we, and we, and we, we got a good run from there on that, on that agreement. So it's uh, it turned out, it turned out to be a pretty good agreement, I believe. Uh, Jeff, uh, on that, uh, in reading reading the rent, there's a three percent boost annually. Correct. And, and so <clears throat> yeah. So there would their thousand be a thousand plus the three percent the second year. Uh, yes. Okay, and when it gets to the two thousand, it's two thousand plus the three percent. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, the honeymoon rate had everything to do with the fact that they're just not a big carrier. Yeah. So. Other questions. So this is this, now this uh, was was an add on uh, where 18 18 T owns dish. And and I and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, no. but eight. No, not, not quite. Yeah, not quite. No, AT and T is uh, carrying Dish's traffic. I'm sorry. On a side agreement. On a side agreement, and yeah. they wanted just to put the put the equipment on their yeah. tower. And AT and T would have made keep a us out of it actually, yeah. and just collect from Dish as they were going to do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, they, they, so Jeff, uh, Jeff, uh, uh, you know, smartly got us in there. So no, 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 no. <laughs> You don't get you don't get to uh, more or less sublet your your tower and and make the money. So uh, so that's that's what brought all this uh, about. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Hear, hearing none, seeing no hands. Motion. <laughs> of, oh, what? Am I wrong? 
I think Mike got his hand oh, up. Mike, Mike, okay. Mike, oh, Mike, you got it. Mike, you're on mute. I'm struggling uh, yeah. <laughs> with the numbers. Um, and I guess, Jeff, one question. How, how do you how do you get paid on this? Uh, I, I get paid. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bill. I think I billed about 10 hours. You, you're paying. You're getting paid really on this deal? Or do you make money from the... I don't make money from the carriers or anything like that. No, I just okay. I, I straight up negotiate the deal and I charge, I think, 10 or 11 hours, I think, is what I invoice. The, the Grove Bill the, Towns. There, yeah. there, there was a recent check cut for Jeff. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just I'm just trying yeah. to understand. Yeah, this is, yeah, it was Jeff's Jeff's work, part of his, his uh, 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 unlike the other one that we talked about where he can work his fee into the overall uh sale, sale yeah. which can uh, be done a lot of times this yeah. he he doesn't get anything from them uh he has so, to get it from us if if in just the simplest form um and i kind of got the numbers a thousand and plus three percent every year right and how mm -hmm. long does that go how long does that go for isn't it 20 uh, years yeah it's five years that's five years for the one thousand yeah and, and Plus three percent each year. What happens if we don't do this? Uh, if you don't do it, uh, you just lose the carrier. You just lose the income. So it's uh, that's. I suspect they'd uh, probably lobby and try to get the antennas up through AT and T, so you know, or, or something like that. But uh, yeah, you yeah. lose the income. This is a nice. This is a nice uh, a replacement for the sprint income we're going to be losing. Okay, and is there any? Uh... <clears throat> is there any impact on property values at all? No, they're going to put uh, half a dozen uh, antennas in a, around that monopole that's right next to the carport where the police cars are parked. So it's just it's it's going to just be on that tower. My guess is AT and T is probably carrying their traffic from Riverview and from uh, uh, Gibraltar into the north and south ends of the island. So the AT and T networks is picking that up. The Dish network on on the island here will we'll pick that up and, and they'll have to pay us for that so it was in other than this income is there any benefit uh to the residents yeah the uh they, they've got the prepaid market now so it's so it gives you a, a, a basically a population of, of lower cost phones so if you were a senior that just wanted uh, a 911 phone or something like that the prepaid is a really great way to go because then you don't have a monthly fee for it or anything else you know, so it's uh, maybe college kids or, you know, students might want to prepay so they don't have a monthly bill. So you, you, it, it, it fits a niche. It's not a huge market, but it does fit a niche that, uh, that would otherwise maybe not have an option. Or the coverage would be so poor they'd have to go to some, you know, Verizon or AT&T to try to get a better, uh, a better reception on their phones. So it is kind of, it's, it's, it's filling a niche. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We have a motion. The Grosseal Township Board hereby authorizes the execution of the attached agreement between Grosseal Township and Dish Wireless LLC for the lease of property located at 24 or 529 Meridian Road, the cell tower, uh, cell phone tower. Uh, Uta. I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Jameson. I vote yes. Okay. Joe. Aye. Mike. Aye. Uh, David. Aye. Carl. Aye. And I vote aye. So that, that uh contract will be executed thank you moving right along we have uh joe uh an airport agreement 
Yes, sir. Gross Hill Township Board hereby approves the signature of the attached agreement between Gross Hill Township and the FFA for federal funding through CRRSAA, totaling $13,000. Support or... <laughs> I think that's a typo. I think that's supposed to be FAA. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what FFA was. Future Farmers uh, of America. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and and uh, Derek, would you uh, fill us in because, uh, uh, you know, fill us in on this, please. Yeah, th this is a grant agreement between the FAA and the township for COVID relief funding, uh, totaling $13,000. There is some information in here about what these funds can be used for, but basically payroll for the airport department uh, is where this is gonna go, or that's the intended area for this to, 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 to go. Um, for these type of agreements, we have to have authorization to sign on behalf of the governing body. And that's what the request is uh, for this evening. Uh, just on a, a side note, the expectation is there's gonna be some additional COVID relief for, um, I'm not, I'm a, I don't recall what the terminology of their acronym is, but basically COVID relief dollars that are going to be available over the next three to five years and uh, the airport's in line for some of those funds as well. We had talked a little bit earlier about our engineers being a very important part of running the airport or helping to run the airport. They're going to be assisting uh, with applying for those dollars on behalf of the airport and the township. Um, and those appear to be quite significant. So we'll, we'll keep you abreast of that situation as we move along. Thank you, Derek. Questions? Oh my goodness. Uta has her hand up for the first time tonight. <laughs> How could that possibly Go. be? Um, Go ahead. Having dealt with um, COVID relief funds for the clinic, um, uh, some, of, some of them have in time now put strings attached. And um, the CARES Act sent a lot of money flowing into doctor's offices and midstream, they changed the um, reporting requirements. When we first signed on, um, you didn't have to report unless you received more than 150,000 grand. Um, by the time it came time to report, they had reduced it to 10,000. If you received $10,000, you now had to report and you had to meet a, a slightly more strident um, set of um, requirements than initially outlined. Um, I think that's probably something that CMS and the federal government reserves the right to do. Um, in accepting this, um, are you are, are are there any strings attached to this that may raise your um, caution? There are there are reporting requirements that are are mandated. Um, the the benefit is, Roseal Municipal Airport. Um, is part of a block grant state when it comes to federal funds. So basically what happens is the federal government allocates dollars to the state of Michigan, um, FAA dollars, and then MDOT distributes those dollars to the, the member airport. So you'll see in the application or the information here, there's a lot of different airports that are getting a lot of money. So the airport manager will have to work with our engineers and also the state to make sure that we're in compliance with those reporting guidelines, but we're in good company because just about every airport in the state of Michigan received these exact funds. So I'm sure the state will help and there'll be a template of the things that have to be done in order to ensure compliance. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay. But it's a very good. Derek, Derek. Derek it looked like you, you could use that money for maintenance, salaries, um, it didn't seem to be restricted in what you could use it for, like some of the other uh, monies that are available. Yeah, it was a fair, it was pretty liberal in what you could use it for. And I'm going back to conversations I had with Mr. Duker when uh, and these dollars date back to the summertime. I think you'll see some dates in here about July. And I think that that was his intent uh, when he was awarded these dollars. Um, and I guess I would continue with that intent unless there was some other uh, opinion as far as what those dollars should be spent on. Um, and, and I'll look to the, the new airport manager to, to, to voice her opinion on that. 
Other questions? Okay. With the, uh, I'll double check here because I always seem to miss somebody. No other questions. So we have the motion. Roseal Township Board hereby approves the signature of the attached agreement between Roseal Township and the F FAA for federal funding through CRRSAA totaling $13,000. Uh, Joe. Hi. Okay. Jameson. Hi. Uh, Carl. Hi. Uta. Hi. Mike. Hi. Dave. Hi. And I vote aye. So uh, we have a new uh, airport manager who's department is getting some more money. Last but not least, we have the uh, action item number 12, which was an addition. And uh, Jameson, again, if you could uh, state your motion. Uh, yep, let me just find it. So uh, I move that the township board directs the manager and deputy uh, clerk. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you because you're not gonna move. <laughs> you, you, the motion is for the board to move. Is what okay. you want to say? I I motion that the uh -huh. township board directs the manager and deputy clerk to research the feasibility and associated costs of implementing hybrid meeting. Okay, uh, Ryan. Oh, uh oh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead, and we have a support for that. Brian, did you get that? I got it. Okay, all right, good. Uh, go ahead, Jameson, just give a little okay. background what you what you said before, but say it, I think it's worth saying again. Okay, uh, so I think given that the uh, provision in the Open Meetings Act may, that allows us to do virtual meetings may be expiring on the 31st of December and is as of today, uh, it would be a good idea in order for us to encourage continuing public participation and discourse to enable uh, residents who are concerned about coming to Township Hall to be able to attend our meetings and interact with us virtually. Um, and we could accomplish that through a number of systems. Um, some of them are probably already deployable and built out for organizations like ours to use. Um, the only concern I have, which maybe, uh, Derek or Brian could reach out to like Trenton or Riverview, um, would be integrating a system like zoom with our broadcasts on GI TV. I'm not sure how they would queue that up or what mechanisms they might do that with. Um, but that's the, uh, that's the intent is just to keep the public involved and give them options. So especially with our older, more vulnerable population. I mean, we don't, we don't want them to have to come all the way up to Township Hall and potentially expose themselves to something, you know, because they want to talk about the, I don't know, the sidewalk across the street or something, so. Okay, very good. So Questions? That what he was giving the history, David. We don't have to support the history. Oh, I want to. <laughs> I appreciate it though. <laughs> uh, any any questions? Uh, <laughs> any questions? Uh, uh, Uta? Big surprise, right, Jim? Um, yeah, I I I I I actually am getting ready just to say Uta, and not go. even ask. That's go what ahead. I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. Just yeah. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. Um, I guess um, to kind of add a scope to that is also then while you're looking into um, the feasibility and the costs, also look into the um, legalities. You know what's possible, what's not possible. Um, who can be who can be live, who can be Zoom, um, so that we have everything spelled out clearly and from an authority that the board will recognize so that we don't get um, out of left fields, you know, my expert versus your expert. Um, so we kind of have real tools to work with. 
something to work with. Right. And I think, you know, looking into the, the feasibility aspect of that, it certainly would fall into that, but that certainly, we have to look at that aspect in, in there. I, it, good question or good statement. Anyone else? You, Dave, did you want to support Uda's statement? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah. All right. All right. Not hearing any. Uh, again, I'm going to ask Jameson to repeat the motion because I didn't get it all down. Okay. The motion is that the uh, township board directs the manager and deputy clerk to research the feasibility and associated costs of implementing hybrid meetings. Thank you, Jameson. And I will start, I will start with Jameson. Aye. Okay, David. Aye. Carl. Aye. Mike. Aye. Joe. Aye. Uh, Uta. Yes. And I vote aye also. So we've done it. Uh, that passes, we will look into the feasibility. Thank you, uh, Board. You're welcome. Um, and that, I believe, ends our action items. And we will go into reports, starting with Madam Clerk. Well, hello. Um, I'll keep it uh, light and short, um, according to... Um, lengthy discussions with Deputy Clerk Friel. All is quiet in our office until the next election cycle. I, I think you've sensed that over the year, but next year we go back to a regular, um, quite uh, busy election cycle. So we will start recruiting um, election workers, uh, poll inspectors. Um, you know, there's lots of positions open, um, reminding people to register to vote, um, verify your signatures. Um, update your addresses, um, but basically on the clerk's front, everything is quiet right now. Um, I had a short communication from Fire Chief Beaudry and just a year to date total, um, 641 rescues, 140 fire calls this year, it's coming to a close. And I think a collective sigh of relief that they now have two bridges to use to access two different health systems um, which is to the benefit of everybody. So um, without any further ado, that's the clerk's report for tonight. Thank, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you. Um, from the finance office, our investment for the month, of, total investments for the month of November is uh, $10,250,000. Uh, these accounts generated a total of $215.44 in investment interest at an average interest rate of 0.0341%. Uh, this information is available on the Grosiel Township website. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. With regard to uh, taxes, the 2021 winter tax bills have been mailed. If you have not received your tax bill, uh, contact the treasurer's office uh, to confirm your mailing address. And mortgage companies that requested a copy uh, will receive a duplicate copy of, of that bill. Uh, winter tax bills are due February 14th and eligible residents can apply for an extension of the uh, tax due date to April 30th of 2022. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if you're coming in to pay your taxes in person, Township Hall will be closed on December 23rd, 23rd and 24th, and the following week closed on December 30th and 31st. Um, there's no deep, we have no DPS meeting, uh, commission meeting this month. And from the Community Recreation Commu Commission, um, our next meeting is Wednesday, 
December 15th at six o'clock. And uh, we encourage any, any, any members of the public that wanna come in and comment on our master plan uh, because it is scheduled to be approved that, that night and uh, will be coming to the board for its approval uh, in January. And finally, for our seniors out there, our senior luncheon uh, sponsored by the Rec Commission, the Rec Department is December 15th at 12.30 at Centennial Farm. It's $10 per person. And you can call 675-2364 or 676-4422 extension 113 to make your reservation and or to arrange uh, free transportation to the luncheon and that concludes my report for the for the evening thank you and I, david and i support my report thank you report starting with uh, mr porcerelli good evening i sit on the airport commerce park Commission and the meetings are usually the third Monday of the month, 6 p.m. in the boardroom. Um, they've been working really hard. Janelle was the interim manager, and after tonight, she is now the uh, manager of the airport. And she's been working very hard, and things have been going very smooth. I talked to John and Ron um, in the last month, everything's been going uh, right on schedule, and uh, hopefully, now things will just continue this way. So. At least they have now a full-time manager. That's it for tonight. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Jameson. All right, good evening. Um, I sit on the ZBA. We do not have a uh, meeting scheduled in December. Uh, however, I have been working uh, with plans and ZBA on uh, some of our amending some of our older ordinances i understand a couple of them went to plans on the six i haven't gotten yes. the uh the minutes back from yet that yet though so i don't know how that fared i did ask uh for them from Brittany, so it'll probably have them tomorrow uh regarding our study session earlier um I believe that the creation of this subcommittee should be brought to a vote. I know we had a study session about it and we discussed it, but it's an extremely important hire, probably our most important hire of this board's, you know, this board's tenure. Um, and while I don't think this uh, subcommittee implicitly violates 6710, it does modify a longstanding precedent in how we hire police chiefs. So I think it's prudent for us to construct a motion and publicly vote on that motion so that we can structure the committee in a way that we can all agree is devoid of implicit bias, political motivations, and so the public can hold us accountable for that decision, you know, by a, a line vote. Um, I realize that may delay your intent, Mr. Supervisor, um, but if we could do that and maybe have a special session after we've put together how this committee is going to work. I, I would feel better with it if it were in writing, you know, something other than just there's going to be a committee, it's going to exist and there's going to be some people on it. Um, so that's, uh, that's my only request in that regard. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Jameson, uh, Jaeger. Uh, and uh, next, Mr. Bletcher. I have the privilege of sitting on the Greenways Open Space Commission. We did not have a meeting in December. I have nothing to report new with that. I also have the privilege of sitting in the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission. I'm pleased to report that we just completed a grant application with the Ralph Wilson uh, Design and Build Fund Community Foundation that was founded by Ralph Wilson, uh, Jr. And the application is for $50,000 for the uh, move of a fence along East River between Bro Road and the Gibraltar Bay unit of the Detroit International Wildlife, Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge. Um, the purpose of that grant is to move the fence to the west of the current maintenance road 
and uh, that would allow us to use the maintenance road, a soft trail uh, for purposes of bicycle pedestrian activity. It would connect Grow Road, East River, all the way down some 3,200 lineal feet to the refuge. And that would um, provide for safe biking and pedestrian area. Currently the uh, walkway or the road uh, has limited sight distances and has steep uh, edges to it and uh, frankly is uh, somewhat of a, a hazard to uh, people on bicycles or walking, particularly younger people. Um, and I'm looking at uh, people that are using bicycles for the first time. Uh, the application uh, was made with a significant amount of work and assistance from John Hardick. Uh, Derek Thiel, our township manager, has written a number of these grant applications, he was instrumental in making sure that we dotted the I's, crossed the T's. Uh, Brian Friel put it together um, in a packet that made sense for everybody. And I also want to thank Chair Brian Pollock for his oversight uh, or input rather uh, with that, as well as John and Bert Urbani with the Conservancy. Um, we were able to receive some letters of support from Downriver Linked Greenways, from the Conservancy. And uh, we have an older letter from uh, Fish and Wildlife that uh, has a um, area down there that uh, was dated from 2016 for a similar project. So I did speak with Tom Y. Woody with the grant and uh, he said this is exactly the kind of project that they're looking for. The project is capped at $50,000 and fingers crossed that we're gonna be able to uh, uh, get some good news in April when that uh, grant is uh, announced. Um, previously, a federal land grant uh, was denied um, because it didn't meet their criteria, but we're hoping that with the link to the Down River Linked Greenways, as well as the Iron Bell Trail, um, that will be something that will be meaningful. Um, I did have uh, an opportunity um, to make a very short uh, presentation to the Greenways Open Space Committee so that their uh, commission so that they could uh, understand what we were doing. I had a very brief limited conversation with airport liaison, uh, Porce Relling, gave him overview on that. It is my hope that uh, in January, I can meet uh, with the Airport Commerce Park Commission so they can have a good understanding of what we're trying to do and where that trail is going to be. So fingers crossed, hopefully this will go in place. And just as an update on the engineering study, I'm going to ask uh, tomorrow by email for Chairman Pollock, uh, as well as the Downriver Linked Greenways co-chair, uh, that we have an ability to set up meetings with uh, uh, the Grozeal Rec Commission, uh, as well as Grozeal Golf and Country Club, and uh, with the Grozeal DPS Commission uh, regarding the engineering study, so that we have all the people with stake in the outcome that are able to be involved in the engineering and can speak as to what their concerns are. And I hope to put that email out to everybody tomorrow. That concludes my report. And I end by saying uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Amen. I guess I'm up. Jim, you're not going to say, oh, you did say something, but you're on mute. Um, Wait a minute. Yes, Mike, you're right. I, I muted myself. But uh, Mike, you're up. Thank you, sir. Uh, short report tonight. Um, so, obviously, we're working hard to fill positions um, at the police department. Um, a good reason why. I mean, a good indicator is year over year, year to date through November, our overtime is up 63%. And so that's just filling these holes. And uh, it's I'm happy with what we agreed to tonight so that we can move quickly. We need to, um, to fill positions uh, when we can do it. Uh, the uh, deer call is, uh, went well the earlier one in the fall. And um, it's looking good right now that we will be able to expand the amount of permits that we received this year uh, 
versus last year. And I'm hoping that uh, we can make a, uh, a dent in the population, um, total population. And with that, I'd just like to say, because, and I, I apologize, I have not had an opportunity uh, based on my meeting with um, Jim and, and Dave earlier today to discuss alternatives um, and not, not a permanent alternative, but a one-time exception um, to 6710. Um, and it was kind of a surprise for a lot of people, but uh, we were extremely far apart and um, what I decided to support myself personally, okay, not speaking for the total commission, so I'd have to check with them, and I haven't. Um, but we got 20 applications, and that's a lot. And the people that sit on the commission are very busy people and uh, very hard to get together. And thinking about that and the fact that um, um, the best possible scenario in the world that I'm from is when you can get management uh, to agree with the commission and the commission to agree with management and board to agree with the commission. So having these folks as part of the process, again, this is not changing 6710. Uh, it is a one-time exception. Um, you know, I, uh, I will, I will talk to the other commission members and see what they think. And, uh, I will, I will let, uh, I will talk to them independently. So it won't be a quorum or anything like that. But I just think that, uh, that's the best possible outcome. Um, and, um, and what we're not talking about is a, a permanent change or anything like that. And if, if I got this wrong, Jim, Dave, you, or anybody on the board, please speak up. Uh, but that's how I interpret it. Mike, and, this is for this instance. You're absolutely right. This is so for this instance. For the record, it's for this instance. It's not a permanent change, but it's a special circumstance. Uh, and so, uh, you know how I feel. And anybody got any questions, feel free to give me a call. Uh, but I will talk to the other commission members because I'm just one person on the commission and get their opinion. And I'll, and I'll let the, uh, the board know and then we'll proceed. I guess. So for the record, that's where I'm at. I'm done. Thank you, Mike. And I think I'm not muted. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Uh, Mr. Assorti, do we, you have anything for us tonight? I just reminded the board, if you have stuff, um, you know, have information and legal issues, you, you know, and get in touch with me. Um, I'm always free to here to discuss stuff and, um, cases or concerns you might have, uh, that type of thing. But other than that, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and Merry Christmas to you. Uh, uh, Eric, we haven't heard from you all night. So do you have anything you'd like to say? I will try to keep it very brief. Um, just so the board is aware, um, the, uh, the township ended up getting hit with like a 26% increase on our health care renewal. Uh, for our employee benefits. So Ann uh, and our brokers have been working, insurance brokers have been working very diligently to come up with some alternatives as far as packages are concerned for employee benefits. Um, and we've been going through meeting with uh, our various employment groups over the past week or so to just make sure that everybody's aware of what options exist. Um, if you do have any questions about any of that, feel free to give either Ann or myself a call. We can hopefully clear those. Um, you know, answer those questions that you might have uh, about any of that. So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, second item I have for this evening is um, I have been beating the bushes as it relates to uh, bridge engineering uh, services. Um, and uh, I have received uh, a proposal for bridge engineering services from a firm. Um, I do have a second firm that might be interested in providing a proposal. Um, they're supposed to let me know this week and if they do submit a proposal, it'll probably be, uh, I'd say the second week in January before I receive that. I'd like to exhaust that opportunity with that second firm 
uh, before you know I have any conversations with the board as far as taking a look at these. So I, I will keep you in a loop, but I just wanted to let you know that I have been working on that. Uh, we do have a proposal and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys in January about uh, whether we get this second one or not. Um, those are the only two items I have uh, for this evening. Uh, and uh, as Carl had mentioned, uh, Merry Christmas to you all and uh, hope we have a great holiday. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for everything tonight. Uh, I have a hopefully short report here. Uh, DDA meeting, uh, we've moved it to this week, Thursday. It'll be at, set, uh, at 6.30. Uh, normally we're the following uh, Thursday, but uh, we're closed that day. So uh, uh, we're, uh, we're moving it up. Um, I did want to mention in, in, in DPS, uh, we have three and a half people out in the field. Uh, currently, uh, two of them are on uh, extended medical leave because they had operations and uh, one, one of our people left. So the, we only have one person there. So obviously the, the service that can be provided uh, by the three and a half can't be provided by one. So I just ask the people, if you have anything with DPS that you be uh, uh, aware of that and uh, things will get done. It'll just take a little longer until, uh, until everybody heals and gets back. Uh, um, uh, Brian, uh, is transitioning us from GI Connect and Brian. I'd just like you to say a word if you if you can regarding that transition and what the people should know. Uh, yeah, um, we're transitioning from GI Connect to. I was not ready for this. Um, I'm sorry, Code Red. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I'm drawing a blank on what it's even called. Code red. Code red. Code correct. Red. Which police and fire have been using for seven years. So, uh, so there's a lot of people already on it. It's just if you want to get updates regarding township departments, um, you need to log into your account and um, update um, who you're going to get notifications from. And if you have trouble and you don't know your um, login information, give me a call. Give me an email. And I can contact the company um, and they will shoot out an email to you at the email that you provided when you originally signed up, um, which will give you the opportunity to log in and uh, do your updates. A lot of people, I've talked to some people so far, have forgotten their passwords um, in that seven year span, which is easy to do. Um, so that's one easy way to, uh, to get it fixed. Okay. And basically, it's the same service we're providing now. There just isn't. An, there will not be an app anymore. You're just choosing how you want to get your communication through email, um, text message, yes. phone call, uh, ho however you'd like to get that uh, information to you. So, okay, uh, yeah, and I I did want to mention that because we do want the people to realize that and sign up for the new. Uh, code red if they haven't already and that they realize what's going on. So thank right, you, that's, Brian. That starts on Wednesday, just uh, so everyone knows. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple other things. In case there's anybody out there that hasn't heard, the bridge has reopened. And uh, my gosh, a lot of trips got a heck of a lot shorter uh, being able to go right over to the Trenton area instead of around to the Trenton area. So uh, uh, I, I, I just wanna say thank you to everybody involved in that uh, for getting his, it done as quickly as they did. Uh, and uh, and what a what a wonderful present to us to have for our Christmas uh, and holiday season that that's a reopen. I would also wanna tell everybody because there's been a lot of rumors uh, uh, going around and I, I, you know, even I think some of our, our board members may have been saying this, that the bridge is going to close. The bridge is going to close in April. Right, right now, we have not had any discussions of the bridge closing in 2022. Absolutely none. I don't know where that ever, ever came from. 
we have never ever discussed that even as a passing thought. Uh, it it is just not on the table at this at this time. And if it ever comes up, like everything else, we get that information out to you as soon as we get as soon as we can give it to you. So uh, 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 please don't be listening to whole booth. Uh, people or people who just aren't in the know uh, that isn't going to happen and that's that's also a good thing uh, on the bridge the one thing that hadn't been completed by the state was the new load re uh, uh, load requirements uh, everyone believes that they will go up uh, and as soon as we get that which is supposed to be in December uh, as soon as that comes through It'll be posted, uh, but as of right now, it's back. It, it, it's still posted at 26. Uda. Yeah, Jim. Uh, also, question is: Is the speed limit going to stay at 35 or go down to 25? I believe the speed limit still on the bridge is is 25. Still 25. Yep. Uh, that I hadn't heard of anything changing. Okay. All right. So good news with the bridge. We have it for the holidays. Uh, so that's, that's good. Uh, I just wanted, I, I just uh, absolutely want to, want to wish uh, my fellow board members, uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays, all of the residents, uh, uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And uh, to our re uh, non-resident who owns property, I want to wish him a Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Everybody just enjoy the holidays. Uh, enjoy your families. Uh, really reflect on how I, everybody has problems, uh, but uh, it's just a wonderful time to reflect on all the good things in your life. So uh, that is, uh, is my holiday wish for you. One last thing I have to say, uh, and this is tongue in cheek, uh, but I, I was told that th there was something on social media regarding uh, uh, wages of the board members and, uh, and hours worked. And I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Carmazan for reducing my hours that I, I work and for giving me a huge raise. Thank you very much. I'd just like to know when I'm gonna see it. But uh, thanks a lot for that. And with that, I end my report. Uh, we have no discussion items, so we will go to public comment. And uh, Brian, again, three minutes. Uh, on any topic. Any topic, state your name and your address. Um, if you have any comment, please raise your hand, use the raise hand function on Zoom. And do we have any public comment? Kathy Walker. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, Kathy Walker, um, what is it? Thorpeport 26051. First off, I'd like to thank Mr. Smoke for offering the island residents a means of access to and from the island for the past year and a half. Thank God for that bridge. I'm, I'm really, you know, I really mean that sincerely. I know everybody's mad about paying, but at least we could get off and it's a lot cheaper than Harsons Island. <laughs> That's $12 a round trip. Anyways, secondly, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Why is there a deviation from the regular process for this uh, uh, police chief. When Supervisor Loftus bypassed the commission, and I'm sure you remember that, Jim, because you voted against it, as did Mel Vesto, because they bypassed the process. You know, why, why this obvious change in, in attitude? And here's the other question I've got, and I'm, I'm trying to get it all in in three minutes. What qualifications does this group to pick the proposed hi uh, hiring committee have. I mean, no offense, but you know, I, 
I've got like three degrees and I couldn't ask a question in a meeting like that. And I find it hard to believe that everybody that that's being selected is really qualified to know what it takes to be a police chief. And I consider the police chief the most important employee in the township. I truly do. And that's no insult to any of the board members, but safety is the most important thing to me. And I think a lot of people feel that same way. Now, following all the, the reasons, you know, we've been going on this selection for the chief. It's been put back for the last 10 months. And, and I hate to say this, but it almost looks like a kangaroo court. Like nobody wanted to pick the police chief because we had all these impediments. And I hope that it's been going to be done the right way and the right person will get in, the one with the most qualifications and be chosen by people who are competent, which I would consider the, the police commission to be. Thank you and have a nice Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, uh, next up, Deb. Hi, thank you. Um, I hate public speaking, um, but I'm gonna go with it anyways. Um, listen, I, I wanna make a comment. Deb, Deb. Can, can you give your name and your address, please? I can. I'm Deb York. I'm a proud resident of 8003 Bellevue Road. Thank you. I want to make a, com a few comments on a couple of different issues. And please, supervisor, don't cut me off. Bear with me. Um, I'm not really good at public speaking. Number one, um, I wanted to make a comment about Mr. Forrester. Um, we recently had Mr. Forrester do some personal legal work for us. Um, and my husband knows Jeff and uh, Jeff sent us a resume, um, you know, being very conscientious as he was. And I was really taken by one of the items on his resume. And it was some cell tower lease work that he had done for a nonprofit organization pro bono. Uh, caught my attention because my daughter had worked for that uh, nonprofit organization for several years while she was working on her degree. And I was really impressed by the fact that he had done that work and I kind of asked him about it and he very graciously didn't take much credit for it, although he did a tremendous job of it. And what I discovered was that he had a tremendous amount of experience in the cell tower leasing in many different areas. But the fact that he did this work for this nonprofit organization also taught me that the man not only had experience, knowledge, but he had a heart. And um, we're really lucky to have Mr. Forrester helping us out on this. So I just really needed to kind of say that tonight. Um, I, I wanna talk about something really quickly that happened a year ago. In August of 2020, I received a letter from the township about somebody who had an interest in purchasing a piece of property behind my property on Bellevue and between the Centennial Farm. and. I have to be honest with you, 30 years ago, I got involved in politics at the uh, school board level. And there were some things that went on there that I didn't approve of and I fought them on it. And an elected board member pulled me aside outside and said, you don't pay enough in taxes for your opinion to count. I told myself at that time, I would never get involved in local politics again. Uh, since then, my children have graduated from the schools. Um, I spent many years off the island taking care of my parents. And when I came back, I swore I'd never get involved again. But I did because of this issue with the property. When we first got the information, I succumbed to the rumor mills. And the rumor mill was saying- Deb, that, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you, you have 30 seconds. Okay. Well, that rumor mill is not something that I should have listened to. The rumor mill was incorrect. And the person who was looking to purchase this property was had the utmost of integrity and couldn't cut down a tree if his life depended on it. And all of the rumors that were going around that I succumbed to and was fighting were not true at all, okay? Now, the only reason I bring that to mind is because of the whole issue about the police chief hire. And I think I heard really clearly from trustee um, Jarecki, that this kind of divergence from the ordinance, which I could read to you if you really wanted to, is that 
it, it, they've given they've been given the authority to hire okay and that this i'm hearing from mr jarecki that diverting from this is a temporary situation because of the number of people that have applied it's not somebody's attempt at a power play to undermine the commission and the authority that they've been given by that ordinance and i think that if it hasn't been made clear to anyone else please somebody jump in and tell that rumor mill the truth that that's what it is. And I understand Mr. Jarecki can only speak for himself as the liaison to that police commission, but put the rumor mill to, to rest and, you know, assure us, tell the public, you need to tell the public that diverting from this, that the commission agrees to that. Once you tell them that, once the commission agrees to that, you put the rumor mill at rest. Don't let the rumors, you know, drive the politics here or drive what you're trying to do. Everybody sitting up there wants to do the best for this island. Every single one of you want to do the right thing. That is correct. Deb, I have to, I have to ask you to wrap it up, please. Um, I, I, I'll just leave it at that. And okay. Can I just, let me just throw one more comment in. It takes a village. It's okay. Christmas. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, honey. I love you. And thank you for the village. <laughs> now, if you could just get the horn open, I would really love you. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I see Gross Hill Civic Issues not as a group that is undermining or part of the rumor mill, but as part of the solution. They bring up issues that we may not otherwise have known so that maybe we can ask questions. And maybe it's about things that you're not legally even allowed to talk about. I say embrace them as part of the solution because it takes a village thank you so much for your time thank you wow thank thank, thank you thank you deb all right okay uh, do we have any other public comment tonight greg carmazan yep greg carmazan clinton township 21228 east river Grosse Hill, mm -hmm. homeowner taxpayer uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate the board. Good decision on investigating the hybrid meetings. If you need more information about it, I suggest you talk to the clerk of the uh, of Trenton, uh, Deborah uh, Devitt. I talked to one of the council uh, members over there, and she apparently put this together for uh, see at Trenton. It's working great. You can look, go online, watch their video, see how it works. Um, I don't know the details of how they put it together, but she does. Uh, secondly, on uh, uh, as regard to uh, Supervisor Budney, uh, I'm glad to say that uh, he is uh, certainly, along with the rest of the board, uh, earning their earning their uh, their taxes. As I get ready to pay my uh, tax bill before the end of the year, uh, I will attest to the fact that we all taxpayers get a good return on on the township board. No one is getting uh, rich serving as a uh, township board member. <laughs> now, on the um, issue of the uh, police commission and its authorities, I want to read uh, section 6710C. The police commission is delegated the responsibility and shall prepare and submit to the township board an organizational structure for the township's police department detailing all positions within the department and the duties and responsibilities associated with each position. Upon uh, adoption by the township board such organizational structure shall be the organizational structure of the township police department and the commission shall thereafter periodically review such organizational structure and make recommendations for adoption additions modification deletions if any with respect to uh, here to the township board for possible action thereafter uh, as i understand it um, this township board approved well, the police commission approved a five-year plan that has a deputy chief position in it and that's on the org chart that the police commission approved and, and that's still yeah, there okay that's so still there. My, okay so my question is that after the after the uh, the uh, chief position is filled will a deputy chief be appointed or hired and greg since we don't really this is not a discussion, it's a comment. I will be glad to call you this week and and explain that to you. Okay, well, I, it's just I understand it. Uh, it may be... Uh, and and let, let me just say this. 
this year it wasn't funded. The position okay. wasn't funded. Well, I, okay, I'm, I, I, and I respect the fact that the comment period isn't for getting in a back and yeah. forth, but I, I'm just curious if uh, Trustee Porcerelli has any comments on the value of a deputy chief and the importance of having uh, three members of the management uh, in, in the police department to help with the administration of, of proper administration of, of the department. And he can get yeah, back to you. I'm he sorry, can get, He can get back to you and give you that I, information also, if he, if he so desires. Okay. Well, all right, fine. That's fine. Well, have good. Have a merry Christmas and happy holidays too, to everyone. Thank you. Same, same to you, Greg. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, next up, um, iPhone user. Is that Craig? You gotta you unmute you gotta, yourself. You, unmute. you need to unmute. You gotta push down. Am, the I, unmute, am I yeah, There you go. Now we got you. I'm gonna try to be as concise and succinct as I don't know of as issues as I can be, so forgive me, please. Uh, first of all, relative to the who, 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 who's speaking? Who's speaking, please? Pilkington, South Plains. <laughs> uh, we met before, Mr. Bunny. Uh, yeah, and, and your address, please? Uh, 27985, South Plains. Thank Point. you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, let's see. The uh, uh, discussion relative to the cell towers. I appreciate the cautions that were put forward, um, certainly by. Uh, uh, Trustee Jarecki, uh, and uh, you know the suggestion that uh, we have to be very, very cautious. They are not uh, offering these things, uh, you know, these making these offers without an expectation of uh, you know future profit, uh, which far exceeds. Uh, I think at a time when our world has changed, and we are having a very difficult time getting uh, arms around the connectivity of things on the internet and where and and what that means for gross Hill as a township as a school district uh that we need to be able to consider this as part of the master planning process and be able to project what our uh bandwidth or our uh com requirements are going to be uh i do have some background in ownership uh, on some cell towers and certainly there are a lot of things to consider, whether you own the site, whether you own, you know, what your agreements are and how you can advocate for yourself in the future. So I think we should take this slowly in measuring what our alternatives are, even though it may fill a hole that we have created over the long term. In DDA. The DDA law was recodified as with all tax increment financing districts in the state of Michigan in Public Act uh, 57 of 2018. Uh, the DDA is a state construct. It is not ours to change. Uh, it is explicit in that the, if you look at the definitions sections, uh, that there is a difference between the board and the governing body of the municipality. The board, which has hiring authority, is that of the DDA itself. Okay, so the uh, DDA director, uh, any personnel that work for the DDA, answer to the DDA board and are assessed in their, and evaluated as to their performance. This is not the way a combination position is going to, to, to would work. I don't think it's legal. And I would ask you strongly to take a look at this and revisit it uh, before executing uh, on something. And I don't know any of the candidates, uh, but we certainly need, Lord knows we need help down there. Uh, thirdly, we are missing another financing year on bridge, on the smaller bridges 
for our township. Um, we, I would strongly suggest we put together a group, which I did seven to eight years ago, to be able to investigate the financing programs available, state, federal level, uh, inclusive of those that are governed by Wayne County, so that we can advocate for ourselves effectively and uh, on an annual basis make application for funding for bridges like Meridian, Ferry, Thoroughfare, Elba, Swan, all of those that will require uh, financing where we can increase our uh, what chances of seizing and securing this funding if we understand the process. I don't think that we do that right now. Uh, other than that, let's all try to get along. We're not the enemy, folks. We're the ones that have to fight and pull the boat in the same direction. And everybody have a great Christmas. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. All right, Kevin Flavin. Kevin Flavin, Park Lane. I'd like to recommend that the communication commission that was de, uh, defunded or removed or for whatever reason be put back, uh, start the communication commission back up so that we have public representation on a committee that can oversee and overlook and review what uh, we're doing with our $2 million asset in the towers. And that is way overdone, overdue. The DDA uh, isn't aware of all the wonderful uh, TV that's available online or through the uh, channel 10. So let's get a communication committee going again. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Okay, do we have any other public comment tonight? Looks like we're done. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Or or we have a number of supports on that. Uh, this was an, uh, we had an extremely lot of business to take care of today. Thank you guys uh, for that. Thank you residents for hanging in there. Again, everybody have a wonderful, uh, Merry Christmas and holiday season, and we will see you next year. Thank you guys. We need to vote, Jim. Vote, Jim. vote, vote. Vote, vote. We need to vote. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm on Christmas. <laughs>